All right, so um, I guess I, I'll do a, a quick intro again. I don't know if this is gonna make it to the final floor. I just wanted to make a quick live stream uh, just to try out things. I do have some good ideas for um, future live streams or videos. I'm gonna try to do them as soon as possible, but this is just to a little push to make me, you know, start uh, doing videos. So, um, who are you again? Oh, my name is Jose Miguel Moreno. <laughs> I, I I own a record label based here in Monterey, Mexico. Uh, I'm joined by two good friends uh, that I normally uh, bust their balls live here on YouTube most of the time, and uh, you know, kind of have a little conversation. Again, I don't know if anybody's going to see this, but I just wanted to write on. So. Um, Backstage, um, I suggested maybe talking a little bit about buying records in the sense of where maybe when you started buying again, because, you know, I think most of us here have been buying records for a long time. You guys more than me, of course. But uh, when you started buying records again, maybe where was your approach? Where was it a few years ago? And maybe... Where are you buying right now? You know, I don't know. So, you know, Jason, <laughs> maybe, you want me to go maybe. first? What? No, no, no. George, goes you want first. me to go first? Yeah, you, you okay, were, I, were very fluent before. Let's, you know, again, keep it, keep it up with that. I, I only stopped between sort of, uh, you know, 80, 88, 89. Um, somewhere in the late eighties until the early nineties. So it's only like four or five years. And that was just because I was, you know, at that time I was in my early twenties and I was uh, moving around a lot, you know, you know, when you're in your twenties, you're kind of transient and, you know, renting apartments and stuff. And it was easier to carry CDs around and not lug a bunch of boxes. And luckily uh, my parents took all my records and put them under the house, you know, in boxes. And then uh, in 92, uh, when my parents moved back up to Northern California and I was helping them move, we were unpacking the truck and boom, there's all my stuff, the records and the turntable and stuff. And it, by that time I was settled down, uh, about to get married and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I had a place where I was going to kind of be there for a long enough time to where I could set it all back up. And so the best possible time was then to get back into it. You're talking like 90, 93, you, you just, it was just crazy good deals, you know, just going to Rasputin's local record store and just, you know, dollar 95 every day, you know, all day long, everything. Yeah. But so, so you're from 93 till then, you haven't stopped buying like records? No. No. Well, that's, I mean, you must have found a bunch of crazy stuff, to, you know? Yeah. I was able to fill out a bunch of things that, you know, uh, you know, as we know, I'm a, fan of rush and you know xtc and bands like that i was able to get in beatles and stuff and i was able to get all those records for a buck 50 two bucks a piece uh all day long records that are worth just you know loads of money now um it, it, it you, you 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 when you were going to go down and buy a stack of records it was like take 40 bucks and you're going to come back you know with a stack this big yeah it, a half a cube so it was just totally different you know well, you know, when I started collecting records, my dad got me into it because he was a CD collector. And um, he stopped uh, uh, like a while ago, but uh, for a very strong 10 years, he would like get crazy and start buying a lot. He, he's very much into like Elton John and stuff like that. Uh, and I remember him taking me to get some um, records and... Um, I remember traveling a lot with like to see family in the United States and um, other places. And, um, you know, I just thought it was uh, cool, but I, I didn't thought much of it. And I would buy like three or four records. And I remember getting great stuff, things that I really regret selling, you know. Oh, um, <laughs> my bike was here. Hello. Uh, well, no video, but. Um, but I remember that. And I remember bu buying like a lot of like my Pink Floyd era stuff and a lot of stuff like that that I'm really set in that I 
sold like a lot of years ago when I started uh, my university. Like I didn't have a lot of money, so I sold a lot of records that um, I that I did got for cheap around 2005, 2006, when it didn't really meant a lot to me, yeah. you know, because. And I'm thankful that I left my records with my parents and that they held on to them because if I would have had them in my possession, I probably yeah. would have sold them, you know, because I was yeah. piss broke too. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. But like, what was it? In 93, so mostly just local record stores. You, you always lived in the West Side, like California, uh, Los Angeles uh, type uh, area. I lived in Los Angeles from 1978 to 90, the beginning of 92, end of 91. And so, uh, but besides that up here, and then for four years, I lived in North Carolina and you could go into, you know, on the East coast of North Carolina, you could find some oh, yeah. hardcore, you know, um, you know, whatever they call them. I call them like goodwills and things like that. Charity shops in England, whatever they're calling them. Uh, but you know, like thrift stores and you could go yeah. in there and find, you know, all kinds of used records. Uh, and so, yeah, I kept collecting all through that time. Yeah, I never, I, I stopped for about five years. And, but then, and luckily I didn't have to, you know, I just got lucky. You started way. buying CDs, like as much as vinyl during that era. Well, yeah. And I managed a record store part-time. So um, in that, in that era, 80, 80s, late 80s. Uh, so I was just able to get a lot of CDs cheap and then, and, and, um, you know, promos and stuff like that. People come in and give you promos and stuff. Uh, we would try to give as many to the customers, but if there was anything left at the end of the day, the manager would just go take them. So, uh, I, it wasn't like I kind of collected CDs. I just sort of got the ones I needed. Like, what yeah. do I need to hear when I'm away from my record yeah. collection? And, uh, were you like that much interested in sound during that time or was just cds just like a like crappy cd player and normal speakers or was it also like a thing or you think that it just evolved because of the vc like, like yeah, but, but no i was i was a musician and a recording engineer even back then so i i i was concerned about sound quality but from a different perspective i was more concerned about like the organic part of making a record you know yeah. you make records yeah. Uh, the, the important decisions are made in the studio before the tape even gets rolled. You know, uh, it's so funny when people talk about mastering engineers, because it's like, you know, you could just push a button on your pedal board that will change the entire sound of the record. That's yeah. important. So, uh, I was more into that part of it, the, the arrangement of music and stuff. So I wasn't, you know, thinking about audio file stuff when you're in a recording studio, everything's audio file, you know? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, when I press records, I normally do like 300 of them. So yeah. you, so people can even say like, it was like the hot stampers type stuff, you know, every, <laughs> so everyone's like, a hot stamper. Yeah. Everyone is a audio file pressing. If you wanted to see it like that. Yeah. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hello there. I told you, Jose, when you do your first stream, I will come hey, up there. on camera for the first time ever. So this is my first time. Hey. Jason, hey George. Hi, hi. How you doing? Uh, good. Nice, nice to see you guys. This is first this time is on camera. First time on camera. A, see Jose, a, the big guns are coming out for you. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So I, I'm at work, um, but I told Jose the second he streams, um, <laughs> great. And the fact that he's doing it during the wax, his live stream. All well, right. I <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't know how, how many people, I know, you know I know just an impromptu thing it's not meant to like so so Jason I'm driving on Monday to Austin um I'm driving actually to Dallas I'm bringing equipment and I'm going for the country music awards in Austin um I do graphics for live television I'm renting them computers on Friday morning we're installing it um of next week you're in Austin aren't you yeah I'm in uh, North Austin but if I would love to like say yeah. hello and just say hi. I'm going to be there for three days and we're going to watch the eclipse on Monday cool. somewhere and then drive back to, um, to Coachella. Sure. We can meet up. Um, I can give you my number in the private chat and then uh, we can even go record shopping if you want. I won't torture you, torture you like Jose tortured me and Chance. <laughs> you know? Well, my wife is gluten free. So, oh. 
Yeah, you know, the, 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 the greatest people on earth are gluten free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get 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 ready for the chat, Jose. That's another part of, of live streaming. Yeah, that yeah, you're gonna I know. Your there's only like five comments. Uh, there, there's Michael trying to make me speak uh, German. Hey, there's, Michael 45, how you doing, man? Oh, and by the way, Jose, you know, it's almost impossible now to do a live stream at any point in time without going over somebody else's. Yeah, I know, I know. But and you know what? There's always room for CBS, NBC, and ABC, and Fox all at the same time, 24 7. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just trying out, uh, you know, again, you know, I'm a, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Chris's Instagram. He always posts like rare stuff that I always wanted to get. So, you know, maybe. Because we talked before, even here on uh, Zoom or whatever. But maybe Chris, just because uh, you have a great collection, can you tell me a little bit of how you like? Did you ever stop buying records? At where <clears throat> you normal? Because I know you have some stores that you visit a lot. So maybe how it was it like a few years ago versus like right now in your area? Oh, it, here in LA. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot more people waiting in line for. Record Safari to open their doors at 10 o'clock on a, on a Saturday for sure. Um, <laughs> and it's more expensive. And Record Safari, that guy was, you could always go in there and you don't even have to look at the condition. He, he won't put it up if it's bad condition or it'll, it'll, he'll mark it. And you, it's always well below medium. He just kind of changed. And now it's above medium often, which is a bummer because that's what all the other stores do. He was always well below. And a lot of people go there, buy, and then they flip it. They'll go to the Pasadena City College or they'll go wherever and flip it, but it's not as lucrative for them. I'm always a, I'm a chronic overpayer. Um, like, Jose, when we talked yesterday yeah. about Kevin Ayers and you're saying, are oh, you just going to wait to find that UK first pressing? It'll come along. You'll find yeah. it. I'm like, oh, I want that one. And I get it right away. And I I don't reap the financial benefits by doing that. Um, but I enjoy it. it. It's fun doing that. But how, how did he used to buy like before, like permanent or? Um, gold my, um, in the 90s, it was Gold Mine Magazine. And I'm a big Pink Floyd collector. So there was Pink Floyd fanzines and you'd put an ad in the back um, of Brain Damage or one of the magazines and just say, I'm looking for these records. And then um, you would trade a record collector and all the people in the UK would advertise and have all the rare Sibarit singles and all the um, Pink Floyd European 45 picture sleeves, which is what. That's where I first started collecting was the 45 picture sleeves from Europe um, and did that. And then it was just local. And then once eBay came in like 2005 or six, a lot of eBay stuff, a lot of really good finds from eBay. And I still do a combination of eBay, Discogs. Instagram has been great. You see people posted at the yeah. collection and it's really helped. You got me a, what, a Doug Dugs. Um, yeah, it's hard help you, huh? It's also hard to remember that there was a time where it's like you, you know, like to this day, you go to the grocery store on your way home from work, pick up some onions on your way home, right? And stop by the pharmacy and grab my prescription. You know, normal little things that you would do. The, stop at the record store and get the new U2 record or the new Bob Marley or whatever it was. You, that was part of like everyday life. Like you, you had stops on your way home, the grocery store, the pharmacy. And the record store, and that's how you collected, you know, all of that media. You had to go there, and that's a, you know, it, once that's ingrained in your mind, it's just a normal facet of life. You just stop there at the record store and see what's new, and grab mm -hmm. like three or four of the new records, and then go on your way. You know, that's it. it that that's you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, in the eighties, I remember yeah. as a kid, and I like 82, 83, 84, I think it was Thrifty, the drugstore, they would have the, the singles, uh, maybe Wednesday, and my grandmother would, would go there and I could buy one single. It was like the I Love Rock and Roll. I remember when that came out and I specifically got I Love Rock and Roll that, and I still have that and I wrote my name on the stupid cover. Um, but I've got a bunch of those um, from Thrifty. I think it was Wednesday. I used to love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, lo I love that uh, comment. Uh, you know, for me, again, I since my dad was a big CD collector, I used to buy a lot of the, mostly because where I grew up, I grew up in El Salvador, uh, there were a lot of CD stores, believe it or not. And uh, I, like, I remember buying like, you know, the usual things of 12 to 14 year old kid buys like Nirvana or whatever. 
And uh, and I never like I I remember seeing records at like the market or something like that, but it was not as common as maybe like of course like in the U.S. So when I started collecting records was because it opened up a store and and in that store they started selling like new stuff. Actually, I still have a lot of records of when I was younger. One of the first records I ever bought was that um. What is it? Thirty anniversary, Dark Side of the Moon, from two thousand three or whatever. Considered, it's considered one of the best pressings of that record ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I just the last time I went to L.A., which was uh, last summer. Uh, Interstate Five. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been in California, uh, Interstate Five is this big, long, you know, two hundred mile stretch of nothing, just you know, weeds and sand. And every once in a while, there's a gas station and a, you know, a Taco Bell, you, you know, stop. And then there's a rest stop or whatever. Um, we went to we stopped at a gas station just to get gas and go in and get some like, you know, waters and stuff. There was a rack of records in the gas station. <laughs> yeah. Last year, rack of records in the gas station. Who knew? Well, over here, I, I've seen records now at HEB. I don't know if you guys know what it is. It's a texas supermarket but there's some here in mexico so i i mean it's everywhere right now right but uh again I, I i don't remember that doing like that to be honest i buy a lot online most more than that i want, would want to i buy a lot from permanent records on instagram uh, chris has helped me buy some stuff for uh, uh, record safari i do a lot of uh, facebook market which i think it's a it's not as explore as most people. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think people really know about that option. But Facebook Market is incredible because you can pinpoint different states even if you don't live there, and all you need is just hey, can I PayPal you? You know, not friends and family, so you are like secured. And, do they do uh, shipping, or or do you don't have to meet them? I thought for Facebook, like you had to meet them or something, but not really. Huh? You can get them to ship no. it to you. Yeah, okay, yeah, of cool. course. I've, I've gotten great stuff from uh, Facebook market where I'm like, hey, I'm in Texas because I have a, a Texas address. And I'm like, uh, well, will you ship it? See if I PayPal you and I do that. And I've gotten great, great deals. I've done that in Europe as well. Again, because Facebook market allows you to just change your location and just look around. It's like 500 uh, kilometers, I think. Uh or like around the, the pinpoint you put, so you can put like Metallica or Nirvana and you can like look to see what, what's up and uh, just buy internationally again with PayPal. And you have the, you know, if, if it's uh, secure or not, you know, that's up for a debate, but I've never gone scammed. I did that with Craigslist like 10 years ago. There was the Craigslist search. You can go and type Austin and type white label promo and see what comes up and go to the different cities and then call them up. And I bought a lot. And Facebook, for the Pink Floyd, for bootlegs, can't buy bootlegs on eBay anymore. I've got like a couple hundred bootlegs that I've been selling. And the Pink Floyd bootleg groups are perfect because they know exactly what you have. And I've been selling a lot that way. And I bought a lot that way. Well, you know, like uh, old school bootlegs are re getting way more expensive than than you would think. Because Discog doesn't allow it. eBay doesn't allow it. So, for example, when I see in permanent records or whatever, I see them selling bootlegs. Everyone, every every single one that I see, it's like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. It's getting crazy. It, it used to, it used to be if you had a bootleg, you didn't even talk about it. Like it's so yeah. weird that people like have videos now where like check out this new Kiss bootleg I got, and I'm like, I, that's the kind of stuff I was told. You know, you don't even talk about a bootleg because yeah. it, you know it was illegal back. You know. But I yep. guess now it's you know everybody's lax enough to go with it. What, you know, wasn't there like uh, like a few years ago there was like a big debate? I don't remember who was showing a here on the VC. Somebody was showing a bootleg, and people were like, I think it was like even Massey, like like I don't buy bootlegs. So I'm like, mm -hmm. but I I find it interesting. To be honest, I like when bootlegs have pushed a band to release material. Because, because I really enjoy Dylan, that. Dylan, perfect Bob example Dylan. is Dylan. The the Bob Dylan bootleg series is I, some of it's like his best stuff. You can you could buy a Bob Dylan bootleg thing, and it's like it's as good as any of his records. In a lot of Bob Dylan threw away a lot of good stuff. 
I mean, Pink Floyd has great bootlegs that I don't understand why Pink Floyd has never like just said, hey, let's start releasing stuff. It's so, I don't, I mean, I know they all hate each other, but I hope they start doing it because as far as the early years box set, which I think was really good. How many, how many live stuff are there? Like Ukma Uma? Yeah. Right. All the BBC yeah. sessions that did come out. Yeah, the BBC sessions, but I like Delicate Sound Pulse. Thunder, Pulse, Pulse. Um, and isn't it that it? Like, um, and it's all it's all really fucking vanilla. St- sorry, yeah. effing vanilla stuff. It's not it's not good stuff. Well, the, I don't think for me. There's some great bootlegs from 1970, Santa Monica, San Francisco. Really good soundboard type stuff that is would be great to see an official release. That's my favorite era of. Pink Floyd bootlegs is 1970. That that posters Adam Hart Mother October 21st 1970 Fillmore and that's Santa Monica and that's another I I really kind of static about 1970. Isn't there some good Sid stuff too that just hasn't been nothing? Put out? Like, uh, there's some hoarders who have some stuff and you'd hear a little bit, but there was like a Stockholm show released from 67 that kind of came out and was interesting, but nothing great no, nothing yeah. like oh my god this needs yeah. to be released but i mean as far as as at least for me i really just enjoy listening to like a we are recording even if it just sounds horrible and like i've never questioned grateful dead's uh audio quality when listening to like dave's pick or stuff like that i just enjoy it i would just like put it on and i'm like i don't know i just i enjoy it you yeah, know. the bar is set pretty low a lot of the time. When you get a bootleg, you're just kind of going. I just want to yeah. hear the performance. Uh, it's not going to sound good, but anyways, I a, I, look, I, I got to go. I got to go. Yeah, don't worry, don't uh, worry. Jose, good luck with your future mm-hmm. live streams, and yeah. I'm I'm happy to have uh, been able to uh, see you get going, and and I hope that everything works out for you. And oh, and, thanks. Uh, it's going to be good. Thanks, thanks man. Thank thanks you, for thank having you for me. Being here, George. Nice to see you, Vinyl Piper, Jason, everybody in the Bye. chat. Whoever these people are that are trolling me over there, thank you. <laughs> Love you. Bye. You know, I, I have this uh, bootleg, Bob Dylan bootleg that uh, I got in New York City. I think it was uh, near where Bob Dylan used to live, around that uh, freewheeling Bob Dylan. I don't remember the name of the store. I know the guy is really angry. Like, I don't know if because I was way younger, but he hated me asking questions because most of his stuff didn't have pricing. So he kept saying, are you going to buy it or just you're looking for it? I'm just like, I want to know how much it is. Because, you know, 30 bucks back then t- for me was like, whoa, you know, because uh, I was I remember going to like New York alone. When I was like 19. And funny, uh, quick uh, gluten free story is that there's a, a place in, in New York that's all gluten free. It's an Italian restaurant. Senza Glutino, that's the name of the place. And I sat down. And very American way, there was no pricings on the food. So I ordered a beer, I ordered a pizza, I ordered a lasagna, I ordered a salad. And I'm like, damn, like I'm I'm doing it the best way I can. The check comes in, it was like almost 200 bucks. And I had no money whatsoever to pay that. I thought it was going to be like $40, $30, something like that. And I had to phone my dad, who was like, uh, and my sister, and then a friend. And I got money from like five different places. Just like, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. Mm-hmm. And uh, but right close by in the, um, the village, there's there's this store, and he had this uh, Bob Dylan. It was my first bootleg that I ever bought. In search of relief, it sounds so horrible. It's like not worth a dime. But I love that it says, uh, warning, if you're thinking of jumping off a bridge, shooting yourself, or other forms of self-harm, do not play this record. I don't, I don't do not know why, why it says that, but uh, I always find it funny. <laughs> I mean, there, there are better bands that have great bootlegs. For example, I, I love uh, Soft Machine and, you know, Kevin Ayers, Caravan gong but those bands are really hard to get like footage we were uh discussing yesterday um um me and chris were discussing uh joy of a toy 
And it was just like, hey, let's try to find a video of him playing uh, some of Kevin Ayer's uh, 69, 70, 71 era stuff. It was the great whistle test, what, from 71? Yep. And there was, but there was nothing from 69. No, and there's some uh, soft machine era stuff with him. It's like there's a Paris concert that's really good, but uh, like video wise, there's not a lot. So, you know, you know when, like, when you're saying that that 1974 album, the John Cale, Brian Eno, Nico, yeah, I don't enjoy that. And you're like, this is what got me into. I go, really? Yeah, well, I've not enjoyed that for a long time. Yeah, no, either. I don't know why. And I love Nico and it, and I love all those individually, but that yeah, particular right. one, I've never enjoyed it. And yeah, I got this at Cops, which is one of my favorite stores uh, there in uh, Canada, Toronto. Right. But uh, this record, yeah, I, maybe I think you have to be a fan of everybody involved in the production of, of, the, of the record. But Nico's there, Kevin Nair's there, Robert White is playing the drums, John Cale is singing some of his songs, Mike O'Field is playing guitar, Archie Leggett, Oli Halsall. I don't know who Revit is, and Brian Eno, you know, when he was still like just, you know. Jason, do you know that album? Yeah, I know that album, but I haven't listened to it in probably 20 years, to be honest with you. I only know the backstory of that album. What is um, the backstory? Well, I believe Kevin Ayers slept with John Cale's wife, which ruined his marriage. And okay. it happened during that album. That's, that's a lovely story. <laughs> I mean, Nico looks super uh, weird in that photo. She well, looks I just super enjoyed. <laughs> there, there, there are some outtakes of this record that I actually really uh, love. But yeah, it's mostly just Ke like Kevin Air is just like bringing friends for a show because uh, all the the second side is only songs by him, and the first one is two Brian Eno songs, which is bizarre. I don't know why he he got two. Uh, Heartbreak Hotel that uh, John Cale covered, and then The End by Nico, which that's my favorite cover of all time is Nico doing The End. I know not a lot of people love it, but I just adore that. It. It's so eerie, dark. It's the ambience of it, the production. That's a great record. You know, John Cale production. Um, who is it? Um, Phil Manson Air on guitar, Brian Eno on synth. And Nico playing. That's a great, uh, you know, bunch of people playing. Yeah. You know, and 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 what we were discussing yesterday, um, Cami Nears has this edge of knowing how much pop can be dealt into like avant garde ish, proggy type music, but just on the edge. It's like if somebody likes more avant garde stuff experimental music and they listen to Kevin Ayers, I know for a fact they're going to have a good time in most of the songs. And most of people that are into like early Pink Floyd, Caravan, or like, I don't know, like Gong, they they will enjoy those Kevin Ayers records because they are really folky, very British. And I don't know, I, I, I just enjoy the weirdness that this record is it's not recorded perfectly but i i just feel like it's a great gateway to finding <clears throat> out a lot of stuff you know and it's interesting what you said yesterday that you found heard about sid barrett through kevin ayers and the yeah. cd joy of the toy and the extra tracks because i heard about kevin ayers through the same thing as a sid barrett fan and then the same song singing a song in the morning and you said that Sid sang it. Sid only played the guitar in that. And, and his guitar is very distinct. But he didn't yeah. sing that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I know Santi's it's, it's here. I, I asked him if he wanted to join. He can join if, if he wants. Um, well, John Cale, I think, was a lot of... was a great way of finding a lot of stuff. You know, he produced uh, The Stooges. He produced Nico. He did a bunch of great stuff. Uh, and early on, I had, you know, I like Brian Eno. I still like him, but I'm way more selective. When I started listening to Brian Eno, I thought it was like, you know, 
but he's sort of like the Bob Marley of of ambient music. He's just like the name people associate with it, uh, and then this like incredible layer of musicians uh, that uh, you know are, in my opinion, better at, at it, but not as popular. So, you know, I I think that uh, John Cale and Brian, you know, at that early years of my life got me into a lot of different stuff, you know. Um, and your favorite Velvet Underground is the second one? Of the Velvet Underground? Well, I, well, he, well, he. well no, my, my favorite uh, is the uh, the actual self-title, not Velvet Underground Nico, but the Velvet Underground with Doug Yule, because I'm a Yule head. Yeah, I like Doug Yule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Doug, Doug Yule. Uh, I don't know why he never released anything on his own. I mean, you know, Squeeze is sort of like only him, but um, did you ever get those American Flyer records that he's on? No. Oh yeah, I think you told me about those, but no, I I, I haven't. Oh, really? So oh. after Squeeze, he joined a band with Steve Katz and some other guy, and they called themselves like they were kind of like a a minor league '70s supergroup called American Flyer, and I believe the records released on Elektra, I think. Oh, I never heard of that. It's not bad. So it's like a mix of four singer songwriters doing their thing. And you can tell that Doug Ewell has his Velvet Underground influence, you know? So I just found out what, last week, because I, I like, I did that video them without Van Morrison, you yeah. know, the psychedelic archives thing. And I love those four albums. I didn't realize that in 69, they recorded tracks that never got released. And it came out 15 years ago. A whole album of that um, called Truth or something like that. I, I want to get it. I never heard it, and I just found out about it. And I love that era. Is that yep. a reissue expensive to get? I don't think it's a reissue. It never came out, and I think it. So it, the the tracks just came out, and there's like a double album. I and I haven't even searched it. Them without Van Morrison. I don't. I don't know what it's called. I think Truth or something like that. Maybe Stunty knows. Hello, Stunty. He's not amused at all, but that's fine. Hello, Chris. Hello. He's like super asleep. I don't know how, how late it is right now. It's like 4 a.m. something like that. Isn't it for like 4 a.m.? Nah. It's like soon to be free, but uh, I got an early wake up from this From a what? Huh? What? Yeah, from a Jose. Who, who did his see how he did his hair like he's doing his live stream now and has to look fancy and all like what <laughs> this, I, I just shower that's all you know production yeah, yeah. you know production how much that does the water cost in mexico uh about uh one million dollars per gallon yeah that's what and you said your bootlegs uh, that's okay yeah, yeah. Well, we're not really discussing, but well, you, you and I like different type of bootlegs, you know. You have the coil record that I'm always trying to find, but I can't find it here, you know. Um, and I would say that at least for people on my side of the hill over here, even with experimental music, there's really no other way unless you buy it on Discogs to just buy the bootleg or the superior via dog uh pressing that you absolutely love yeah. so you know i i think we're re not really discussing uh bootlegs it just you know came up but um i think it's sometimes important and i think you would agree that sometimes bootlegs are a good first uh way of letting the actual artist learn that there's interest in a record when you Every agree? time someone buys a bootleg, Vladimir Putin gets one more vote. Oh my god! I I I I I I, I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, I mean, I I think that I have great bootlegs. I don't mind owning bootlegs of of stuff that you know. Sometimes I don't mind buying like an an original one. And there are bootlegs that I got not knowing there were bootlegs, but um, you know, 
No, but to answer seriously, it's funny because like if there is an original and a bootleg, of course I'm gonna buy the original. Why would I buy the bootleg? But when I bought the bootleg, because there's no original, and then there comes a, an official reissue, what should I do? Yeah. Well, what, what do you do? Not? Well, like it only happened recently, and I didn't get the, <laughs> the, the official reissue. I kept my bootlegs. Yeah, why? Because it just sounded like because you uh, didn't bother buying it. Because I know I, I will have like you know a sort of disease kicking in that will prevent me from selling the bootlegs even when I get the original. And yeah. <laughs> I, like having both at the same time feels too silly. So the bootleg or counterfeit? Yeah. Uh, well, like a bootleg in my world, yeah, that, as it's true though that in the U.S. it's it might be a little bit different. The bootleg is a counterfeit, yeah, or counterfeit. a non-official. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have usually a bootleg used better. to be just like a recording from the. Is is, is Tanti frozen? Here. No, no, it's, frozen. It's, no, it's French internet. Am I? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Well, I I do have bootlegs well, that sound better than than unofficial release. I got. No, I have. It's, I got. It's French. Can you hear Am me? I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No, well, I I do have bootlegs that. Oh, I can hear my my voice now. Oh wow. Can you hear me? Really going That's amazing. Can somebody speak so I can see if it's one, two, yes. three, one, two, three. All right, all right. Ron Baudry. Well, I got this. Ron Baudry. Ron Baudry. I I got this uh, bootleg in Barcelona without knowing it was a bootleg, and then the official reissue came out and it's fucking horrible. So you know, I I I always keep my bootlegs. I don't I don't mind that at all. And um, well, tell me, uh, Stunty, because uh, I know you pretty much never stop buying vinyl records. But, Am I um, still frozen? No. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about, like, I don't know, like how you used to buy records before Discogs and all that versus, like, how do you try to do it normally now? Because I don't know if. I think we, we never talk if we actually actually go to record stores anymore that often. I, 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 I went to record stores today, actually. Oh, yeah? I got... Mm -hmm. Okay. Egypt? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Steve Lacey Quartet. Yeah. Evan Garcia. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm in France, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and today I had like three hours that, okay, I can take these three hours, and I found a, a record store that was in an ancient uh, gas station. Like, they replaced the whole gas station by, by a small, like, indie record store. It was pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, he had some good stuff. Some, and, yeah, great bargaining. But, like, to answer your question, before um, before discogs, well, thankfully we had eBay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how how <laughs> long did you started buying from eBay? I, you know, like like in the nineties, like from the get go, nineteen ninety eight, eBay. But eBay, before that, just before that, did, did the world exist? I yeah, bought on Prodigy for a while. Yeah, on some message boards on Prodigy. All right, like, but that was like meetups. Yeah. Like, how you, how you? It was in like a Pink Floyd room, um, message board where you talked Pink Floyd stuff. What, when uh, was that, Chris? Ninety six, ninety five. Did you feel, feel like crazy. a criminal? Did you almost feel like a criminal when you were buying records online in ninety six? <laughs> Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd bootlegs on the secret message board. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, not really. <laughs> no, I, I understand the question because you know, like the primitive looking chats. Uh, how do you pay that? So people just give you their like bank accounts, and you give them like your. Um, 
let me think. No, it. You're right. What did we do? Uh, with, with cassettes, we would send someone two cassettes, and they'd send us one back with music on it. So we trade cassettes, and when it was vinyl. I think it was cash. Um, cash on the mail. Yeah, I think so. Well, that might have taken like a money order. Go to Seven Eleven and do a money order. I I think it was really? cash. All right. Well, that's interesting. You know, here when I try to buy records, most of the time I get I there's like a 30% chance that I'm getting scammed really hard. <laughs> high percentage. Because uh, over here, it's way easier to deposit money from one account to another because you can go to like a 7-Eleven, just give the account and just deposit from there. So you don't have to give the name or anything. You just have to give the number of the plastic. Um, it is really sketchy because that means that... Um, People are really just gonna either keep their promise and send you the record or don't do it, but there's no way to reclaim the money. So that's that sucks a, a, a lot. I don't I don't know if because in the US I know it's it's not like that. It's only basically PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, which is really sketchy. But uh yes, 7 Eleven over here in Oxos, which is like a convenience store. Um, you can pay anything there basically, but uh, I don't know. Uh, when I was when I was growing up, it was mostly one record store in my country that sold records, and then the other things were like, um, you know, just bins of, of stuff just existing there. But um, I find it funny how how it just shifted and and. Now we take, I don't know, again, Instagram is a great uh, way of getting records. And for example, like in Austin, I really love how friendly record stores are from one another. Well, I don't know if that's really true. Do you think that's true, Jason? What's true? Do you think that a record store is like, because I know in, in LA, most of them know each other. Would you say like in, in Austin, there are like friendly-ish to one another or is it very competitive it's very competitive it's cutthroat yeah uh i mean they're still friendly i mean i'm pretty sure they all know each other you know but uh you always it's kind of like it's similar to like la as chris knows like you have to have that good hot you know you have to have that heat right you got to yeah. promote that heat you know, and you got to have it curated. If you ain't got that heat, then someone's going to go to Record Safari, you know? And Lance knows this. I've I've met Lance since, oh my gosh, like maybe early 2000s. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and also Alex from Record Safari, you know? Yeah. These guys were just hunting for records and they knew that they had to get there quick because if they didn't get there quickly, you know, someone else got it. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, over here at least it's it's really weird because uh, record stores owners hate each other because they think like they're all like incredible <laughs> competition, and uh, I I don't know. Well, at least in Austin, I think most record stores have really specific taste. So much so, like for example, Waterloo, I don't think it's a competition for anybody else because it's only mostly uh, new stuff, right? And then end of an year does have used stuff and it's a little more pricey-ish uh, type deal. Um, but uh, the other ones are really more just secondhand, like 60% secondhand, which I appreciate a lot because that's that's the first thing that I want to go to. I, I mean, I love end of an year and it's, it's a store that I, I think I've never been to Austin and not been in end of an year. I just love their selection of music it normally is more aligned to what i like buying but uh i don't know it, it's just weird to me when a store right now mostly in the u.s has only reissues or like new stuff it's boring i don't know who is like the target audience for that or i don't know you know but i think that uh, 
Can I, um, I've never said this before on the stream, being my first stream. Can yeah. I show a record? Yeah, of course you can. Because you guys are, you this is a safe, safe heaven to people. show in the amount of records. So um, I buy records, they come to my office. Yes. If I tell my wife I'm not going to buy any more, they stay at the office. And then I bring one or two home every so often. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I the Peel sessions for a long time. Starting, oh, yeah, starting with Sid Barrett. And so Record Safari has been, oh, they bought a bunch of collections. And half of these artists have never even heard of. And maybe you guys can help me. All right. Um, I've never done this. So specials, I know. Yeah, they're the Scala, Scala oh, one tone. Nope, yeah. No price sticker on that. Um, I got produced by Elvis Costello. Yeah. Oh, uh, All right. I, don't, I don't know that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> All right. But how many songs has that Robert White? I think it has like four songs, right? Or something like that. There's four songs. Yeah. yeah. Neil Diamond was the composer. Oh, I'm a believer. Oh, he does. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a believer. Uh, the monkeys. I'm a believer. That was like a number one hit, I think. Never heard of this. No. Have you guys heard of this? No. Nope. Nobody. Yeah. June. Never I mean, heard there's of so many bands on that. What does it say? Is that Lindisfarne? Lindisfarne? Yeah, I don't they're know. Kind of like a prog band. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like the logo looks like I buy. I don't know it either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't have a. I mean, uh, the dam. Well, that's, that's another dam. That's punk, yeah. I've heard this name, but I don't know them. Oh, I thought it was going to be the Screaming Trees. I don't know. I don't know the Screaming Blue Messiahs. Wow. I, I, don't, like... I don't know how most of these bands got selected. I think he selected them, right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. What was the name of the show he had before? Um, uh, Top Gear, isn't it? Top Gear? Yep. Yeah, right? Have you guys heard of any of these? No. Yeah, I know I the family, know. that eats uh, group. That cool just yeah, yeah, yeah that, that one I know. Oh, I don't know what that is. Reggae, maybe, or? Toots. The you, you really love your blind buys, Chris, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh... That's like a yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have a oh, Billy well, Bragg? All, all these, he's all over the price. Some will be six bucks, one will be 30. Ooh, that must be good. It's 30. dollars. Yeah, new order. I have Sid Barrett. I I snuck the cure home. I snuck Susie and the Banshees home. I snuck Joy Division home. Shellac has one. Okay, that's it. I've, I've shown my records, and you guys are stumped on. A bunch of that's that's good. I feel better. Wait, now that you don't have these in your hands, you, I don't understand. Do you you're, you're lagging a lot. The name of the label that put this out. All these pay, peel sessions from that time that has all these logos, and I think that by the their late eighties, early nineties, they they were like kind of. Also financing a few indie labels, but uh, they had a few, very few releases that were not Peel Sessions, but I think they had a few. Yeah, well, so. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's interesting. I mean, I, 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 I actually don't know who had put them out. So that's, that's it. one of my favorite bands that came out in the John Peel Sessions is uh, this shoegaze band from uh, Houston. That uh, looks like. It looks yeah. like shit. It looks like absolutely, but this is this came out on Mute Records. It looks like a Red Hot Chili Peppers bootleg. Yeah, it sort of does. It's signed. It's signed by Josh T. Pearson. This is a weird record. It's an incredible shoegaze record. Very Texas at the same time. It's about this guy uh, having a revelation that the final battle between good and evil was going to be fought in Texas. And uh, I just find it incredibly funny, you know. Was well, somebody funny putting music on? Can you hear that shit? Uh, so, uh, so Jason, say something. Why well, I'm going to close my window over there? I am here. You are here. <laughs> yes, you are. Jason, is that a mono zombies? Yes, it is. 
Is there a big difference? Uh, or what are the differences? You can actually ask Jose. That's like one of the records we listen to, I think. Which right? one? Sorry, I, I was. No, looking. we only listen to Piper at the Gates of Dawn. So in the Zombies, Odyssey and Oracle, I think the mono has got more presence, more punch on it. Um, but I think it's more fun in stereo, you know. Um, but it again, punchy. That's that's about it. You know, you know I I've never fully listened to that. Uh, record myself we did i did hear with jason but it's one of those bands that i know exist but you know there are there are bands that i know of that i i i hear them so much that sometimes i lose the desire to listen to them a lot um for example with with them i was just like van morrison them blah 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 but when i heard those records without van morrison i was like well this is finally some good stuff because uh, those records are really fun uh, to listen to if you like psych music, uh, which is rare because normally when the band leader leaves, it's always, especially in that era, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I'll I would suggest you looking for that this uh, John Peel session. It's really good. They got together for a South by Southwest a few years ago, and I, I interview him. Uh, I don't know. It's one of the they just released one record one ep and that session and um i i like blind buys but i normally don't do it i mean i, I get the like completing a series but yeah most most of those bands how many how many records are they in the john peel sessions I don't know, maybe like 50. I have like what 20 no. here. They probably have 15 or 20 at home. It's it's difficult to count though, because there are a lot of peel sessions that were released outside of it, and a lot of them that were released like almost like privately, like many yeah, like indie bands that right. on their own label they released. I have a I think I have a, a bikini kill seven inch that is a peel session, but it's not a it's on an American label. And Nirvana was yeah. Nirvana, yeah, had yeah. one as well. Yeah, and again, those BB sessions of uh Soft Machine, uh the Top Gear. I love it. Moon in June. Actually, if you buy that uh book, the Robert Wyatt lyrics book that came out, the lyric for uh, that song is the one in uh the Peel if you're song. interested, there's a website that catalogs all the Peel sessions that have happened like that even were, if they're not released yeah yeah because it was broadcasted mm -hmm. on on radio that that yeah, was the music. point and there's a, an awful lot of napalm death peel session peel sessions i can tell you yeah i i, I know that i know that uh but what was the last do you know what the last one was it was Mazzy. already the, what Mazzy, maybe. Mazzy Star, Macy Star? No, Mazzy, our own Mazzy. No, which one was the like the last? Because uh, you know, Pro Mazzy was probably there, and then Mazzy is the last of everything. So I just assumed. I guess, no, but uh, it, it's it's weird because he he covered way too many bands in such a prolonged uh time and he was really always looking for what was next which i appreciate i i don't i don't know if there's anything like that outside of of, of him or as famous what would do you, you say there's you, you're breaking down i don't know if it's only me but it, your internet is like flaking he, he needs to recharge for everything he's using bootleg internet this french internet I didn't realize how easy it is to ignore the chat on this. Oh yeah, it is super you easy. See what's going on? And you're like, well, I thought that was like five minutes ago we talked about that. I mean, I'm happy there's people here. Yeah, you know, it's like a juggling act, really. You know, you're talking, engaging in discussion. It, it is a thing. Lighting yeah. chat. You know. Zeb said, "Why doesn't someone extract Sid Studio vocals and add it to the almost perfect Stockholm, Sweden? Great gig. Too bad the vocal, which is true. That when that came out, that was great to to see that and." Um, really cool footage, but you can't hear Sid at all. But the, yeah. the music you could hear. 
Uh, Wait, you were breaking up, Slimpy. I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You French were saying internet. <laughs> no, it's, it, I'm in the middle of nowhere on the countryside, so. Yeah. You know, it's weird seeing you without the, the wall in your neck. Oh, yeah, it's weird to not see me in a, in a, in a bed, right? Yeah, you do. You do like the live streaming, right? Um, oh, do you have any other, like, uh, session-wise stuff that you? That you there's think a French, there's a French like noise band, like indie rock noise band, um, called Thirteen Fall. It was never released uh, on, in any way. They did two peel sessions in the early '90s. Their first album. Uh, was a CD only and he's amazing like psych noise uh, shoegaze uh, they had a peel session? Yeah, they had two peel sessions of with only unreleased songs and uh, I have a cassette of that somewhere it, but did it came out in another format? No, 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 no. No. no nothing I mean like the vast majority of peel sessions have never been released yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it, yeah, it's always weird. It's like uh, even like MTV Unplugs. Uh, it's always weird to me that there are like ones that never came out, uh, like really officially. Hole. Yeah. Hole, yeah, REM, right? I think REM has one. It's never been... Probably there was a, um, a radio DJ in, in France that had like a national radio show uh, four times a week, uh, like Monday to... First day every night at nine, and he was mostly like an indie show, and he had his own like sessions inspired by um, John Peel sessions. Except that because he had uh, the French national radio, uh, there were, these uh, sessions were live in a big theater, like or con concert hall. For, that is the one of the French national radio, and he was called Bernard Le Noir. Le Noir. The noir means black in French. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, there were called the black sessions. And there were a lot of great ones there. Like, uh, And I think a few got released, but I, I attended quite a few. I saw the Breeders uh, doing that, like uh, where they previewed, they played Last Splash. Uh, they, the first time they ever pay, played uh, live a cannonball was there. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, but you physically were there to see yeah, them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. I, I saw, I saw Sterolab there. I saw Sebado. I saw oh. Hall. I saw uh, some French stuff. Around, like, around what time was that? Like what time was that? Ninety-two. Um, uh, Sterolab. Between ninety. Yeah, yeah, ninety-two. Between ninety. The first one I did, the first black session was. Uh, a French artist that you, you wouldn't know, but that is very cool, called Dominique A, Dominique A, opening for Sterolab, uh, the first album of Sterolab. It was pretty you know, cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's one of the... I, I saw Sterolab here a few years ago in Mexico City. That's one of those bands that I really wish uh, that I could time travel to see. Uh, early days. Just, I, I love their sound. And I saw them too. Yeah. Well, but the yeah, early days was quite different. I saw them five. I saw them five times between ninety two and ninety four, and always in small clubs. And it was a rock band, like the 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 stuff that they were doing that was a little more electronic or out there. They couldn't really do it that well live, but it was still cool. Have you guys uh, seen uh, Sterolab live? I don't think I could name one song. I'm not sure I could. I, either, I, but I, like I know I've I know I've heard them, but I couldn't name a song that okay. it just wasn't part of my world. So, well, what what record is your favorite? Me? Um, well, not this one. Uh, I gave up on them uh, after Mars Audio Quintet, Odiac Quintet. All right. I, I think this yeah. is my favorite one for for whatever reason. Yeah, this one is great. Yeah, I don't know why I left the other the other ones over there, but uh, would you say this is regarded the best the 
most people would say there's the best one. Yeah, most no. people like that one. No, the, the one that is most regarded is uh, Emperor Tomato Ketchup. That yeah, was I don't the know why I, that. I do have it, but... Uh, uh, you know, I actually... I have, like, uh, simple versions of these, but I don't know if you, if you got these. They were, like, the triple LP sets that came out, like, a few years ago. The Mazzy versions, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, the, yes, the Mazzy version. Jeez. I don't know what... There's, there's like, something... I don't know what that is on the record. Uh, anyways, uh, I mean, you, I think you're the only one in the VC that saw Nirvana. Did you saw Nirvana, Chris? You did, right? Yeah, he I did. I played at my community college in 1989. Oh, wow. That's even better at the time to have seen them. Right. So you saw them with the original drummer? Three, three or four times. Oh, wow. I moved away from Seattle in 96. Did you saw them with the original drummer, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it, yeah, it was. It wasn't Dave Grohl. It, that he was what ninety one, end of ninety one or uh, 90, 91, bef I think it's it was like that, a little bit before. Was that Peter Stan Peter? I don't. I'm forgetting who that original. You know, was. Nirvana was the first band I saw live, and I was so freaking young. And it was in nineteen ninety, so it was obviously not Dave Grohl. But I have no memory of it. So for the longest time. After I saw them again later, and that I was more like aware and sentient about music, I had no idea that I had seen a, a, an earlier version of, of them. I didn't like Nirvana. I liked Soundgarden better than Nirvana in '89 because you could hear the vocals. You could hear Chris Cornell sing, and Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, I couldn't hear and couldn't understand. And I didn't. And it switched, and I liked Nirvana better. And now I like them both a lot. Yeah, but but. You and how old are you, Chris? I am fifty-five. Fifty-five. Okay, yeah. No, I thought you were the same age as I am, or something. Right. No, this is the, the one you're saying. Yeah. But this is your favorite, or you think this is people's favorite? No, no, this is my uh, this is my favorite. But right. I, I really like also, uh, but one that I bought on CD back then I still haven't got on, on vinyl yet, which is. When I hate, I didn't like it back then. The the um, Bachelor Space Age Bachelor, which oh, right. I was too young to enjoy it when it was released, and and now it's probably the one I would love to listen to the most. And and why haven't you bought it? Just not not in, not in a hurry. Not in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, is this the best switched on? This is a compilation of singles. Yeah, but there's more multiple uh, editions. This is of the early edition. stuff. This was released originally in 93, if I remember correctly. Yes. 92 or 93. Uh, 90, 92, I think. Yes, yeah, 92. Yeah. Well, I, I love... You You probably... I don't know if, if Chris... I, I think you would like this. Uh, yeah, uh, I think so. I think you would like that. It. It's it's a little. It sounds it's as chaotic and peaceful as as, as in the same breath, I guess. But um, I just I got into it. It sounds like a lot. I, I've, I've talked with Sonny. He, he says that I'm crazy for thinking that, but he has this sort of like very like European type pop built into like a little noisy like landscapes, but. I, I really love it. I don't, I don't know how to well, else. How you put? This is it? exactly what it is. Oh, so oh. why would I say you're crazy saying that? Well, you, you said like, no the other day. No, no, no. But one time I recommended a record to Chris that he he bore and he thought it was interesting and but he didn't keep it. This one I think he would keep. Yeah, you think you would you would like it? I don't know why this is my favorite one, but but I I like it. And again, it has like a thousand different stuff that I, I, to be honest, I don't have time to, to listen Nancy, to. Did you ever get that record where I put the record inside the sleeve and shipped it away? <laughs> Not yet, but, uh, no, it's there. Oh, you haven't gotten that yet? No, no. no. I, I don't it's... know how that happened. I'm sorry. That's stupid. <laughs> That's all right. That will be, you know what? Maybe, uh, what, if I eventually get it, uh, I'll show it and I'll have you as a guest when okay, I show, we'll show it. it. <laughs> we told, Maybe you can help me understand a little better the significance. <laughs> uh, Jose, can I show a record? 
Yo, you don't have to ask me. It's my in my live streams. I show records like it's like oh, all right. The e EP collection. Nice. The last Robert Wyatt record worth having. No, that's not that's not true. That's and a great compilation as well. That's yeah. a great compilation. At last two... I am free. Yeah. I can hardly be in front the, of the, the, the record that Chris was just showing, the the green one, is this. You will, if you listen to the record, you will become a socialist. Yeah, that's it, true. it's like science. <laughs> this is yeah, it's the official. Uh, that's uh, also my uh, my review of the record. Am I showing? Am I holding this right for? Yeah, of course you are. Okay. This is my copy. I thought we we're supposed to take the sleeve off it so it doesn't glare. Ah, you can show it this to you on. Don't worry about that. It cost me two thousand yen. Two thousand yen? No, I didn't. And that's my last rubber white that I have here that hasn't made it to the house yet. Um, I th I think I think rubber white is way easier to get into than most people would think. If you if you like his vocals style, I think you're way more in. It took me a little while to get to like the vocals, to be honest. Uh, Rosé, on a scale yeah. of one AGK to ten AGK, how That's how easy yeah how easy do you think it would be for Ron Baudry to get into Robert Wyatt? Like a ten, like a ten, definitely. I definitely. think you are right. You're probably right. Yeah. You, if there was like a fifth plus fifteen answer. It, Probably we still do that. Um, well, you know this. I'm going to ask you, Stan, because I know you didn't. You don't like everything, but you're a big My Bloody Valentine fan. So, do you even care if My Bloody Valentine releases another record anytime soon? Not, a, not that. Not at all. Not at all, right? Yeah. Do, do you had any feelings about the M MBV, the the last one, the purple one? Zero. <laughs> I give zero fucks Man. about that record. Kevin Even Shields, before I hurtful. listen to it, he's hurtful right now. Hurt. I mean, Loveless is one of the the obviously the best records of the '90s and one of the best rock records ever. And yeah. they kind of like by waiting, what was it like twenty years? No, uh, yeah, twenty yeah. years to release a, a follow up to that. It was it's kind of an admittance that like. Yeah, no, we can't. I mean, I don't understand Kevin Shields. He he does. Uh, uh, before uh, before you you go on, I will make something you probably don't know. Yeah. After after Loveless was released, every year, every six months for years and years, if you were reading the new Melody Maker, the Enemy, or the, um, the what was the name of the other? tabloid uh, music um, uh, the enemy the, 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 new melody, uh, the new musical express and the melody maker there was always reports on how far in into the next album they were there was always like asking kevin shields Lo, okay so when is the next album coming out and he always had like an answer and which drew him further and further or deeper into depression because like shit i can't do it it's like like when people talk crazy. about um, um oh uh wilson uh was it um the beach boys how like the, the 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 trouble he had to go on and do more music like that he's that's nothing compared to my bloody valentine uh, yeah yeah i mean uh... I know I, I find it interesting. Actually, uh, Kevin Shields released the pedal uh, at the end of last year, and when you unscrew the back of the pedal, it came with a USB with like a record. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I, I like that sort of like non-format uh, uh, stuff. But um, I, I, you know, I think I wouldn't need care as well. I think too much time has passed, and I actually like the other day you recommended me um, Kevin Shields' brothers band, um, which I thought was interesting. Uh, you know that that, that uh, ten inch record, uh, Wounded Knee, 
which I think yep. Chris would be interested in because you got like uh, two guys from Mercury Rev. You got um, Jay Masses. You got the brother of um, Kevin Shields, who was in Royal Skate Skinny. It's produced by Kevin Shields and Guy Fixen, who produced Loveless and, and and a lot of other stuff. And they only did two hundred copies of that. And 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 it's cheap. It's, no, it's not anymore because, like, I, I told uh, Cole, uh, Sean, about it, and he yeah. bought it, and his bandmate bought it, so there's no copies left of anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Way to go. Did to go. what did what did Mercury Rev end up doing when they were done? I, I used to love them, and I haven't paid attention to them in in a while, except for getting the originals. Did they turn into another band or different bands? Not really. They just took part in other bands touring, they or doing special one-off projects and and stuff like that. And I guess there will come a time where when there will be something more like uh, readable for fans. And but there hasn't been really anything. It's like for the longest time in the '90s, as there was no new My Bloody Valentine record in sight. There's quite a few bands that had like one seven inch or stuff like that with the, the members of Marble Levantine with like super groups. Uh, there's one called Clear Spot uh, that was yeah, Marble Levantine and two other great bands I don't remember. And they did a seven inch, nobody bought it, and it was over, and many things like that. I mean, I, 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 I think Marble Levantine just, um, lost interest or maybe they just felt that they couldn't uh, no i think that like loveless came out when uh, electronic music of the type of apex twin and all that was taking over the the punk do-it-yourself uh, way of doing music mm -hmm. and like loveless was kind of the last hurrah of that kind of music yeah like you can't it makes no sense to be a band anymore to go you know have band practice in a studio and to you know the, the trouble of getting all four or five members of the band together regularly every week and all that that, that, that was kind of over plus the fact that when you have loveless and you have Seafield right after that who are basically doing the same thing as loveless but taking it a step further by in using electronics heavily to do that and and basically sounding like and showing because Kevin Shelf was aware of Seafield and he he loves that music but yeah it's kind of like okay shit people want me to do my next record to be a, a rock record and if I'm well, honest with myself I can't really do that you so think I have to find a way to uh, like it was like a very difficult equation for him I think yeah I, I i guess it makes sense i mean i mean Nir nirvana could have easily well they only released one more record right but i think it could have happened to them as well they could have been like a two record band you know yeah when you think about a band i don't like and a, a musician i don't like but i respect um, um john frusciante oh frusciante yeah yeah at one well, point, he, has, like, he, he I, kind I, of gave up on, on, on that kind of music for the longest time. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers at all. Uh, uh, Frusciante, I enjoy listening to his records, but in a weird way. Not, not like so much in the music, but in just the weird ways he would record music. Very DIY-ish type music uh it's it's, a, it's very inspiring sometimes some some of his records some don't make absolute sense which i enjoy as well but uh it's not something i i have or collect but when i listen to them i i um i like them um but yeah that, that that's first record or that first breakthrough record and then the band breaks in and has uh, a little success i think it's really hard for most bands, you know, nowadays, I don't think it was that uh, important back then because, you know, Black Sabbath, how many records didn't they release like a year, you know? Because I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
uh, the first two records came out the, the same year, right? The first year, right? Chris or Jason, I don't know if anybody knows this, but um, um, yeah, I two in what 1970, yeah, 1970 were two, right? I I miss that because you know, bands like King Gisser they, they get hate because every two seconds they release a record. They used to be like that, you know. Sapa, you released three records a year if, if he could, and and I actually enjoy that. I I, I think that that's what's missing right now. Most bands take way too many time, uh, much time, like preparing to release a record, you know. Um, it's not like we're missing records. No, 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 not missing records, but. Um, it takes a toll on bands when they see like all these other things nowadays happening. Do we? Uh, do you think we should have a police force, yes. and like who? Who would? Who should be the boss of that police force? Uh, Ron Bowdery. No, no, me. <laughs> uh, uh, I want yeah, to be the police of weird. like. Can I please be the police of Elton John of? Uh, yeah. Well, Elton John needs no police. He's been releasing the worst shit ever, like every year for like the last five years. He said he was retiring, but all that crap he's been <clears throat> releasing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I I enjoy long gaps of stuff. For example, like uh, you know, John Cale just announced a record. I was telling Jason, I'm not a huge fan of the electronic stuff he's been releasing for the last. 15 50 years? No, no, shut the fuck up. Uh, for the last like <laughs> cool. 15 years or something like that, uh, it all started with this crap that I really don't care for. This, the shifty adventures in Nuki Wood. Like, what the fuck is that? Uh, but I still love it. It's like a, a record from the Cookie Monster. It, it does sound like that. So that's why I bought it because I love the Cookie Monster. I was done with John Cale after White Light White Heat. Oh no! Don't say that shit. <laughs> don't say that shit. I mean, Songs for Drella is, yeah, yeah. A, to my ears, a perfect record. Uh, not that it is perfect, but to my ears, it is a very a good record that I I actually love. I I just think it's very niche. I don't I don't I don't know if he's more accessible than Lou Reed. I don't think it matters. But um, I don't know. Jose, which yeah. record do you love that you would be ashamed to admit to Jason that you love? I'm not ashamed of any record that I love. Yeah, but come on, it's Jason. Yeah, Jason kind of... likes uh, Taylor Swift. I, I like Lana Del Rey. I don't mind saying that. Right? Oh, okay, so you think that Jason is a piece of shit so that you don't have to be ashamed of anything. Okay, I get you. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying uh, oh, I, I don't I don't get ashamed by any any record that I own. Yeah, yeah. that's why oh. you have all these Adam Sandler movie soundtracks. Hey, they're not soundtrack. You know they're not soundtrack. There are like comedy records he would release. Right? So you have also soundtracks of his movies. Don't lie. I only have one. The um, well, I have two. Um, the Hanukkah movie and then the um, the Uncut Gems, but that's a great soundtrack. Uh, I, I I disagree. I think Songs for Dell is essential for the Velvet Underground catalog. It it's like a reminiscing of a friend who just passed away, and they were thinking of him and doing this like autobiographical, like maybe a little bullshit take on uh his life and i actually enjoy it i think it's piano guitar vocals and the lyrics and the vocals exchange are really nice you know i think it's uh interesting but it is you have to be more of a lou reed john kale type of uh of guy i don't know i i i, I'm, I still listen to the stuff he releases you know like i don't know if that's the way, are there any bands that you still that you don't like anymore, Stunty? That you were like, but you still listen to them, like when they release music? 
he, he's gone, right? Yeah, I think he's gone. Any any that you like, Jason, that you're like, well, I still listen to them, like, I don't know, be mm -hmm. it Roger Waters or whatever. Uh, probably Bob Dylan, maybe. Like, you know, listen to that new record and then like, uh, is this okay? I don't know, you know? So you think it's going to be crap, but you're like, oh, well, anyways, you know what I mean? I've seen them live so many times. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's st stunty silence. I, I think he's, he's – he, can you hear me? <laughs> no, he's he's completely gone. His handle is pretty good. Take I'm away not, his wrench. Well, do you have any <laughs> bands like that, Chris, that you're like, I used to listen to it, but well, – Every so know. often, I'm embarrassed to say – that I like all of Courtney Love's solo and whole, and then I defend it when I'm talking to someone. They're like, "What? Well, why would you like that?" And like I, I talk myself back into it. Like, no, she's great. I, she didn't kill Kurt, and I really I, I like what she's singing about. I like the music, and it's jammy. And I I saw I was at Hollywood Bowl, and I saw she opened up for Lana Del Rey, and I went there specifically for her. I um, mean, Lana Del Rey was good, and it was great. It was front row. But right there, and I got some great footage. But every time she looked at me, I put the camera down because I felt like she didn't want me to have my little camera up there. But I, I, I like Courtney a lot. I, I like Hole. It's like a guilty Hole. pleasure. No, I don't think it's like I, it's good music. You don't have to be guilty trip to it. Well, go Hole, but or solo Courtney, I guess, is more guilty pleasure. Yeah. Can you hear, hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, the funny thing, uh, or not, it's not really funny, but I remember buying the first whole album and feeling almost like you feel like kind of ashamed almost instantly. And I kept it. And I think it was it two years ago, I put it out and and gave it a listen, to, like as a last hurrah for it or something. And I was like pleasantly surprised, honestly, because like the second whole album, no, no, no way. <laughs> no way, Jose. <laughs> but the the I, first one actually is it's decent. It's not it's no secret treaties, but it's it, it it's pretty good. I I mean I I I don't know why people always it's like Yoko and I think it's just like people just gonna hate it because they want to hate it. But uh, I enjoy it. I don't I don't I don't mind it. I. I but I, I still it's think that it's not my go-to, but you mm. know I like it. But I would still say that Secret Treaties by Blue Oyster Cult is better. But that's, <laughs> the, yeah, but that's only you. That's only you. Right? The live through this, I had that on cassette. On the other side, it was the Breeders' Last Splash. Was that nineteen ninety four? Maybe, and I played the heck out of that. And it was. It reminds me of a time in life that. I, it was good memories, and so every time I hear both those albums, I really have some good memories. Were Were you a um, Pavement fan, Chris? Hey, but no, no. And you, Jason? I'm one. A Pavement fan? Yeah, Pavement. Yeah, they're okay. They're all right. Yeah, well, you know, I I know Stunty is, so that's why. I, I mean, um, they're sloppy as all hell, but they're all right. You know. Well, well, that's the thing, you know. That's it's. I think it's meant to be. I, I think Matador Records during that time uh, was um, really interesting to. Uh, but I would have listened to most of, if not everything. From but did you actually listen to, uh, to them properly, uh, Chris? To Pavement? No. Because you would love them. Like it's like a no-brainer. Like the, the if you take all these bands, like. Punk rock, uh, lo-fi, grunge, and all that. Pavement is probably the band with the best melodies. Like when I think of Pavement, I think of Green Day. I oh, no, I no, think no. of rock that I was annoyed at when it came out, no, and I just no, never no. gave it a chance. I just never, I never saw them live, never bought the album, and I don't know the track, but I'm sure I've heard it. Do yourself a favor and listen to Slanted and Enchanted, the first album, which is not even their best one. But you will love it. Like I, I, I. I it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I'm a big hater of Green Day, so I, I, I wouldn't put it no, no way near. I think, I think, uh, like, uh, well, I don't know if Seb's saying that right here, but it is more guided by voices type thing. 
if if you like the breeders and you have listened to some uh yeah. guided by voices i think you would really enjoy pavement it, it I is love the breeders but if, you, if you love the last splash woo Rizoui by pavement is the only album on that level in the 90s in my opinion okay interesting. yeah well, woo is always uh and you know there there are reissues now they're really cheap maybe just I mean, if you see one or listen to them online. Oh, but okay. even like 15, 15, 20 years ago, you could pick these records up in dollar beans in, in London and, and like, uh, it was... yeah. No, yeah. Well, it's going to be tough because, I mean, they're going to get pavement or go to a band I never heard of and just see what happens. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll be on this, you know. Go I will, I'll, I'll pay attention. When I drive home, I've got it on my phone, the Slanted and Enchanted. Yeah. Do you, do you like I'm Guided like, by Voices, Chris? I had a girlfriend who liked them, but I, I just, I never bought them and no. I haven't heard too much. Yeah. Jason, I, 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 I you know. Guided by Voices are great, but they're a little bit boring. <laughs> no, they're not boring. Irish. Really Irish. Boring. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. The thing with Guided by Voices is they have so many songs that could be like, like if you take a band and they have one of them, their songs could be like a one hit wonder, man. They're really good. They're really, he really knows how to write songs. He just vomits them every year. They have three or four records out. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I really love Guided by Voices. Stanti, did you see Sigaros back 20 years ago, 25 years ago? Actually, I did. I, I uh, yeah. loved them, and I saw them numerous times. Yeah, I, I'm kind of starting to put them to not in the same category as Elton John anymore, because I really <laughs> hate them. Uh, but no, no, but really, like uh, for, it's like the most whiniest, the whiniest music I can think of. But I'm being a bit unfair. I, I, I admit. I admit it's. Uh, it's just that it's a little for me it's it's kind of like the, i was really into the whole post rock stuff from the mid uh, early mid 90s and when sigur ross appeared and was part of that supposedly to me it sounded like new age because like no tension it's all like about release sigur ross in a way there's tension eventually but and there's a couple of songs that actually I must admit, like, okay, this is kind of a good song. Uh, but uh, I interviewed them uh, one time. Uh, I had a very, like, a four-hour-long chat with the whole band. It was uh, nice chaps, but uh, an interesting uh, in, interesting conversation. But I, I think I was kind of over that music, that kind of music by 98 or so. So for me, God speak you Black Emperor, does nothing to me. Like, I know it's great. In a way, but like oh, I have oh, zero oh, interest in that. In, in this channel, we love uh, uh, <laughs> God's Fury by Denver. But uh, I mean, I understand what you're trying to say. I never put Sigaros on the same wavelength as other people put them. I enjoy their records, but I see them just as pop records. I don't think they're like this. Their live shows in 2000, 2001, 2000. We're great. Jones would turn around and he wouldn't even face the audience, but no, as a live band, yeah, they're they're they, they play here uh, I think last year. The, um the first few EPs, really, really good stuff. I think no, the first I'm EPs are, are are even like because you know, a lot of these bands, like post rock bands, are interesting because they are kind of a work in progress on music history in a way. Like, let's see where we can take it. So it's in a way, for most for mainstream years, it's not a finished product. So you have to be a real music nerd to get into these things, which means also that you can get over because you're always waiting for the next thing, in a way. And to Sigur Ross credit, because since they are kind of they are a band a bit like Dead Can Dance, they created their own style eventually with their own like made up language and and, and all that. So in a way. Like if you get into their paradigm, their world, then there's nothing to criticize about it. It's just, yeah. yeah At the same I, time, 
well, I'm 2001, to 2002. Oh, really. I imagine you hate Yeah, 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 Stunty, which I love them at the same time. They're different, and I saw them both like a few days apart. And no, I don't hate Yeah, I It's just like... Karen you, the yeah, yeah, yes. It's, it's just like nostalgic music for me. So I, I'm not just not interested in it, but I don't hate it. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a friend of mine's uh, band called The Hack. They're a, I would call them a post rock band from here from Mexico. Uh, I, I did got very much um, like uninterested with post rock growing up because i think i just thought that most bands wanted specific sound that another band was also doing like god's plea god god's be black emperor but this what this one's really good uh I, there were i don't know how easy they are to get but you can get them on uh um discogs or whatever the hack that's the name of the band they're uh from various parts of mexico but uh i, I still give genres um you know a chance even if i'm i don't listen to that anymore you know so jose can you put zeb's second to last comment up i've always wanted to say that as well uh tortoise yeah um I've seen tortoise. my wife and i we were downtown la maybe 2008 or 9 and we were looking for this pie place she wanted a pie and i heard this music i'm like what the hell is that and we went in there and it was, I didn't know at the time, but it was explosions in the sky. Oh. And I'm like, this is really cool. And there wasn't a lot of people there. And I bought the album and I played it a couple of times, but live, it was so cool to watch. I don't think they were very popular then. I don't know how popular they are now, but it was great to see them at a warehouse mm. in, in LA. One, one, one of the last record, if not one before that, which it has like a white cover with some like colored things on it the guy who put that record out used to work at rough trade records in new york city when they was back in brooklyn because they moved it now right and uh i used to buy records from him i i bought this um swans uh love will tear us apart cover joy division cover which i really I boring love. It, well, you know, it, it's a cover. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I, I love it, but uh, not a good match. Let's put it. I love those ones, but they, they were not a good match for that music. No, 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 no. They were not. But, but I'm glad that they tried it out. I think like Michael Jira was really, uh, he really didn't want to see if people were into them, experiment or sound. But he still did it, and I, and I like that. But um, I never got into uh, Explosion in the Sky. Tortoise, I saw live, which uh, were really good. Uh, I, I only have one or two records, the one with the drawing like this. Um, but if you, I, if you put, if, like Zeb asked the question, who is yeah. considered the god for the post rock? No wrong answer here, I guess. Well, there's only one right answer. <laughs> so, sorry. Like, historically, there's only one, and it's still. The best post post rock band because every album is a is going somewhere new and they have five or six albums and it's like a perfect discography and it's labrad ford labrad ford is the ultimate post rock band mm -hmm. and their first album was released in 93 so they're kind of the first band that the word post rock was curated for by simon reynolds in the new melody uh, in the nme yeah yeah, I mean, I, I would say most people would say, uh, uh, why do I keep saying guided by voices? Godspeed, you black emperor. Or, Godspeed is way later. Like, you got no, no, tortoise. No, I, yeah, that's what I was going to. But, like, right now, like, right now. I would Godspeed, you black emperor is kind of doing the same thing over and over in a way very well, but. Well, Tortoise is is, is, a, a, is like, evolving way more. Like if you look at four albums of Tortoise, they're all different. No, no, I know that. And they're all that. post rock. I know that, but that's what I was saying is that I I feel that most people um, think of the sound that Godspeed Black Emperor has as 
what the definite um i don't think so but the definite uh post rock sound is and the reason i say that is because most newer uh post rock bands just try to emulate them without sure. really I, i can just tell you that historically the first like crowd the first generation that was into post rock when it was happening were over it when godspeed was starting or they were at the tail end of when people who were really like you know for whom post rock was very formative in their music of bringing an experience yeah i mean um... when we found something next yeah yeah i mean oh, I, Jose's I, frozen I, now. <laughs> no i'm not frozen no i'm not frozen no but uh you know i i think i think most of the times now especially with you were for a few seconds for a few seconds all right am i but i'm on frozen now no i think it's you with it it's, it's stunty that's frozen right yeah it's stunty All right, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. It's you, Stunty. It's not. It's not. It's not us. It's it's you. But um, again, I I still give a lot of genres that I don't listen to a lot or bands I will um, listen to a lot. I still give them a chance. I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing that all my life, but uh, at least for now, I I try to do it and um, I try to get more into suggestions that i see based on um places where i buy records uh i don't know if you know sound them that's why you, you know that um, what what so that's You're... that's why you subscribe to mazzy right to listen to more suggestions yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mazzy suggestions are always the best uh no, no no but um you know for example i i i love when uh record stores or online retailers that i buy from i get uh hints at things that are getting reissued and all that I, i really appreciate that um that's how i mostly get suggestions because sometimes i think here on the vc i get bored about uh yeah listening to the same four five six bands steely dan yeah, yeah the steely dan shit and uh Even even with stuff like again Pink Floyd, which I've always liked, but not from you know Dark Side of the Moon and all that. Um, but I just I just I want to die when I when I hear you somebody know, discussing Dark Side of the with Moon. Rose, Jason, and Chris on screen. It could be like a I'd have to be the moderator or something because this could very well be a Pink Floyd AAA, like a recovering because you all you guys you're all like kind of like. Yeah, trying to to step back a little bit, right? Like Chris is yeah. selling all his, all his bootlegs. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the reason I'm selling the bootlegs is because as I've gotten older, my stereo's gotten better. I have all that material on my NAS, and I can stream it on all my devices. It sounds the same to me. Playing the bootleg doesn't sound that much better or that more authentic. And mm -hmm. I still hear it, and I'll go through phase, and I'm going to play stuff from 1969 only and i've got eight shelves or eight um cubes of bootlegs and i need the space and i just i've got some really expensive ones and right now they're selling for really expensive and i guess i'm taking yeah. advantage of that um, um, in 10 more years maybe they won't be zeb uh, so post rock it's more ambience and math rock it's sort of like prog on cocaine basically and It is called math rock because basically the metrics in which they're playing just post rock is indie bands that went to do prog and math rock is metal bands who went into prog jeez uh, <laughs> do, do you like any math rock at all stunty well the thing is that it would be all this like you know face no more prog outshoots and stuff like that so you know black midi I, I, oh yeah that's a rob walker band yeah hey, rob walker well I, i actually love the fact that they 
included this uh, barcode as artwork. I, I thought it was. I, I thought it was nice. Would you have this a tattoo of that on your leg? No, I don't. I don't. I don't have tattoo. You know that. Oh yeah, yeah, you're Jewish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jason, do you remember when you first heard the Bob Dylan blues? Uh, that's Sid Barrett's song, right? Yeah. Uh, I probably have to be like a bootleg, maybe in yeah. the early two thousands. Probably. This? Uh, no, it's not on Opal. Oh no, it's on the best stuff, right? Right, because yeah. it it didn't come out or it wasn't out where people heard it to like ninety six or ninety, and it was on like a CD. And like, can, can you show that cover him. again, Jose? It was. I love that song and Vegetable Man as well. I didn't hear the song Vegetable Man until it was on the. That one CD double on that cover, yeah. it's interesting because it looks like a uh, like a crossover between Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins. Uh -huh. If you did the, the two of them together, like you'd that's Sid Barrett, not there. It's Zeb there. On the All the dreams, of... like that. Um, but uh, that was my first Sid Barrett album when I bought it. Yes. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. Can, can Nathaniel Mars come up? Because uh, apparently he's here. Um, you know, I love Sid Barrett. I think I, I wish was there it? was more material. We, we, we can't have a Nathaniel up. It's full moon tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so. That's why I want it, you know. He can come up. He doesn't have to show his video. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he didn't do audio. I can show him that I got the Mummies record that he wanted. Where's my Mummies record? Somewhere I was going to ask you if you like Mummies, Jose. The uh, Mummies? Yeah. yeah. I've got like just, eight or I nine just, singles. I, I recently got the their first record. Um, I think somebody fucked up and they, they put it up for sale really cheap. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere around here. I don't know. All the death rips. Oh, here it is. Right. Nice. Sounds like ass. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mummies are interesting. Um, yeah, it's a it's a band. It's a band that uh, again, I don't know why. I've I've never set foot on LA. I've never gone to LA. I buy a lot of records from LA stores online, but I've never been to the West Coast. I've. Uh, I hope I I go. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I like I like how Stunty keeps his cool. Um, you know, if 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 uh, Nathaniel Mars wants to come up with his um uh or anyone vinyl dreamscape, anyone's again, I'm I'm just testing out how it sounds, how this goes. Didn't have a lot of ideas. I just literally sent everybody a link. It was like, hey, I'm gonna try this out. Anybody wants to come in, uh, review socks or whatever? I don't, I don't mind it. So you're taking over Tuesday night? No, I don't know if I'm going to do it on Tuesdays, but uh, maybe. I don't know. Apparently, Patrick has a live stream as well around that time, which I don't, I don't mind it. Um, I guess my dog wouldn't mind it, but uh, maybe I don't know. I mean, I'm. I want to do videos, not only like live streams. By actual videos. I think you just by yourself talking, you have so much music and so much knowledge. You could just sit there and we're talking about this and go through it. You'd be, you'd be good at it and then bring people on. Maybe. I think I'll be derailing myself from uh, talking about a specific subject, but uh, maybe. I, I'll, I might try to do it again because, again, I, I've tried um, recording videos before, right? Um I might do like like music in Spanish, like 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 the Psychos rec, uh, video we've talked about, yeah, stuff like that. I want to do that. Yeah. I'll six. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know which which one. I think this is the band that I would love to start like a series with. It's called Arcoiris from uh, Argentina. This is uh, a record that I really love. This is Gustavo Santeolaya that I think everybody here knows. It, or have heard something from him, even if you don't know it. He does the music for like all these um, like Netflix type stuff now and the Last of Us soundtrack and stuff like that. But he used to be in this psych band uh, called Arcoidius, which I absolutely love. They were all 
in love with the same woman. They live in a commune. Nobody, nobody was, you know, and uh, they were all vegan, uh, straight edge, and they wrote music and uh, never got high. And they're a really good band that uh, I recommend people getting into. But um, really hard to get stuff. They've been getting reissues. It's not difficult to get. But maybe something like that that I absolutely know like a lot of. Because I never, I never um, get the chance of um, talking about those bands, you know? Yeah. Like when I contribute to a live stream, I'm mostly just like talking, talking over what I know, you know? All right, Nathaniel Myers is right, South Machine and Roy Harper and John Kerry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I sometimes I, I struggle in VC videos because I like I know a lot of the stuff they're putting, but I'm I don't know if I'm like extremely interested in discussing that much of that, you know, which um I don't know. That's why it's a good time to maybe start doing something, you know what I mean? And I'm going to go to the Austin show next week. So I'm going to try to record. Last time I, I didn't even, I think I took next like week. Photos. Next week. Next week. I'll be in Austin next week. Well, I asked you if you were going to be there. It's, I uh, thought that was in May. I thought it was. The Austin show is in May. Next week, I'm going to be in Austin next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Well, that's when the record uh, show is. Yeah, the show's in May. Right. And, uh, no, the show is not in May. It's in April. You know what? You're going to test yourself. You're going <laughs> to look this up on your browser, mm -hmm. and then you're going to present it on the screen. Yeah, how you start I, presenting test. something. Yeah, yeah. How, how do I even do that? It says so present. You, you present, and then you show oh. another open. Make sure you open the. Slides? What is it, slides? No. She I'm sorry, seen... but. Oh, my yeah. international browsing surf, surf uh, internet browsing just was fit over. So I had to pay 40 bucks right now to go back on here just to ask Chris if uh, he has any tattoos. I have <laughs> one tattoo. Oh, oh so yeah, you're a dead. Okay. I thought it was. So he said they degenerate like Jason. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, Wait, so I, I, but I told uh, uh, Chance that, hey, see you next uh, week. And he was like, yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm not going until uh, a month from now. But uh, still. Jose, can, I, can I play a teaser? Yeah, you can play whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know how do you do it. How do you do it? No, but I said I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, no, I but how do you do it here? I don't know. I don't... Right. You hit, I, I could probably do it. All right, all right. Let's see if this works. Jose? Yes. Does my mustache look more Mexican than usual? It, it sort of looks like Sapa. Sapa ish. <laughs> like thinner, thinner. Uh, Mexican mustache or like. Uh, I want to go Zapata. Zapata. Oh. All right. You want me to. How do you do it? Add to stage? How, how do I do it? That's a teaser. All right. Ooh. Well, I guess I'm there as Let's well. Kevin Ayers a little bit in the monitor, and let's just it's here. But I don't know what it sounds like. Oh, this, this it begins with a blessing, video. and it ends with a curse. Making life easy by making it worse. My mask is my master. The trumpeter weeps, but his voice is so weak. As he speaks from his sleeve. I want to watch the same. Why? 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 Why are we sleeping? That's great. Okay. I'm wrapping this. So we're messing around. I'll stop sharing. Oh, I, I, I put it out. I haven't seen this before. But that's that's a very popular video, Seb. Yeah, that's uh, that's with uh, the whole wide world, the his band that he only released one record with, and that song was originally on the first Soft Machine record. Why are we sleeping? And then he did it for the other record. What was it, Doctor Dream? Yeah, Confessions right? of Doctor Dream. 
yeah confession which is a really weird record i love it but but it's not my go-to at all right it, it's uh my favorite kevin Ayers record of all time is uh whatever she whatever she brings we sing i love that record we my joy of joy it. Yeah, I mean, I like Joy of a Toy, but I think I've overheard it too much, and I still love it. I still play it. Lady Rachel, I think it's such a great song. Eleanor's Cake is such a great song. Girl on the String is the... Uh... Girl in the String. Yeah, it's perfect. Like, you can't... Yeah, it's it's the most timeless song of the whole... The whole... It's all, it almost sounds like a an Apex String. Like, <laughs> no, but really, like a lullaby. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. I mean, there's all these like weird electronics in the background. In it. This this is really good. This is I hate outtake records, but this is really good. The odd ditties. You don't hate ditties. outtake uh, albums. You have many. I was a stop line. Well, name one. <laughs> name one that I have. You, uh, I don't know, but you've shown so many. Like uh, this has uh, "Strangers in Blue Suede Shoes," which is. One of the songs he plays on the uh, Nico, John Cale, Brian Eno uh, live show. Uh, Puget, which is May I, the, the French version, which I actually like more. I don't know if, I don't know why. It's just, it's the subtleness of the, the song makes it more, like, make more sense, if that makes sense. I don't know if, if he's perfectly singing in French. I don't know if he has a great accent. Maybe Stunty can tell me that. But to my non-French ears, I like how he sounds. You know, it's not uh, Michael Girard trying to sing in German. That shit is horrible. But uh, this is my favorite Kevin Ayers record. I love it. I, I, there's a, how, how do you rate show, uh, Shooting at the Moon? Oh, that well, I that will be my second one that I love the most. That's the most experimental one, and that's the one. Well. Uh, may I? It's there. Wait, where, where the fuck is that? It's it's somewhere around here. Wait till you wait till you get an original of a Joy of a Toy, and then maybe it will become your favorite one. Oh well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, this one in general, I think is such a great and beautiful record. Again, May I is so beautiful. Reinhardt and Geraldine becomes it starts to become like weird, and then. Colores para Dolores with Robert Wyatt playing. It's beautiful, but the last tracks on 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 side one are just so weird. I love it. It's avant-garde. It's pop. It's it's I wouldn't call it rock, but maybe like some somewhere in between that. And then the second side is just. But one of the tracks on this one, uh, the the well song. It's just as creepy and beautiful and avant-garde as this. So I have it. That's why I have it in, you know. I think that these two enjoy of a toy, number one. Like, you, you don't need more than these three. They're just perfect. I mean, you can't... There's more good music from Kevin Ayers, but, like, then you become, like, a fan and are going... But, like, these three That's records... This, this is my uh, Spanish uh, copy of this. Yeah, um... It was Zeb. Pick up Joy of a Toy. It's Sid Barrett did Madcap Laugh, recorded around the same time. And that came out, Joy of a Toy came out in 69, and Madcap Laugh came out in 70. And a lot of the same people. And the producers was what? Peter Jenner and Malcolm so and so, the first managers of Pink Floyd. And it's, yeah, yeah try with Joy of the Toy. And, and if you like that, just go on to the next one. I mean, Banana just, Amor. Banana Amor yeah, is a good the only thing to do is to never listen to Zeb. Never listen to Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I love Falling in Love Again. Falling in Love Again. No, I think it's really beautiful. No bananas. But this is a, yeah, this is a, this is not a good record. But that song, I absolutely love. I bought the sealed. It's a promo copy for whatever reason. I paid five bucks for it. I think that's the right price for this particular record. But uh, in LA, that'd be twenty five. No, I, I paid it on eBay. I don't. I don't think it will be that much. That one. No, but Chris, remember, you admitted that you had the worst track of like how you pay for records. I'm a chronic high payer. 
I, I like that my copy of this it says says your music for 659. I well this this record as well, I think it's I don't I think soft machine related records, I would put it I would put uh not the ones that I love, I would put uh whatever she brings we sing. I would put uh End of an year. I know Stunty loves End of an Year way more, but this is a record that I can listen to way more times. Nick Mason produced, you know. Um, uh, I think that all Robert Wyatt records are equally worth getting for different reasons up until like AD. After 84, it becomes. It's great, but it's not challenging anymore. It's kind of like him doing Roy this Harper's stuff. A lot better than that. Sorry? I've been getting into Roy Harper, just random albums, and it's I'm I like it. It's a, a lot of albums are good. Really good. Yeah. I this one is this record is shit though. This one no, is it's really, not shit. Really, really I, it's a record that I also didn't have in my mind a lot, but listening to it again. I I really liked it. Last time that I that I I picked it up at Austin last time, I got it for five bucks. bucks uh, so I ten wasted. Bucks. Was ten it? bucks. Yeah, well, that's ten bucks. too much. No, I think I think it was great. Uh, I mean, Robert, when you uh, listen to the no, but when you got the first matching mole record that came only a few months before, yes, or after. Like the, the one with the actual matching mold, and you listen to this, like it's like what, what? With, uh, with the actual matching mold, I like that. They are. Yeah, this one is a great uh, Robert Wyatt record. The other one is like a, a really, a really like boring prog rock record. Uh, this was produced by um, who produced this piece of shit? I don't remember who produced it. Um, Robert Fripp. Robert Fripp produced this one. That's why it's probably year. But 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 this one is a perfect record to me. Yeah. And it is, I think it's like four or five months before this one came out. But Rock, uh, Robert Wyatt got like sacked. In English terms, and and he's barely in this record. Barely in this record. Yeah, the, the thing is that the first record is a band. It's him. The second record, it's him understanding that the other ones really want to do the band with him, but that it's unfair to them for him to continue doing that. So he's kind of giving them that, that record as like a goodbye, but like he's not into yeah. it. He he he's been on the record on that. This one I was surprised by it. It's very pretty, it's very fast. It's only like a few songs. It's with Rubber Wyatt. It's the guy from uh Everything But the Girl. Somebody gave this to me. I did not knew it existed, and I liked it. It's very British poppy folk record, but with Rubber Wyatt playing. And it's only five songs long, but uh, from 81. Oh, no, sorry. I said a, a, a stupid thing that all the records of Robert Wyatt are good until 84. The mm -hmm. soundtrack to the Animal Cruelty movie is actually not good. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, but you're a fan. You mean this one? Yeah, this one is like, it doesn't work. I actually like the side B, and I know Seb likes it. Uh, I, I I think it's very – it's just a soundtrack. So I take it as a soundtrack. I'm not taking it as a record, per se. And it's just background music for a very horrible – because of the subject matter, very horrible documentary. It's, I think in the original documentary, there's also a Talking Head song, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but you know, Jose, uh, Robert Wyatt, he's done songs on that subject that are great. Yes. Like a so, pig. What, what version do you have of this, Chris? I mean, okay. 
this is this is my uh UK uh rough trade first pressing of it. I I I like this record a lot. This is this is after eighty two, isn't it? I think you like this one, right? No. You don't like this one? No. Why not? It's pretty good. But, it looks like you can. I don't think it's bad, but I think it's unnecessary. Like. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the it's the gateful one, for gateful. whatever reason. Yeah, for whatever reason, the gateful one. It's uh, less expensive than the single one. Rough trade. Oh. Yeah, my, mine's pretty clean to be honest, because nobody listens to this shit. <laughs> I, I love it. I okay, think John, I've got to go. I got to get out of my house and drive home. But this is a great first stream. Thank you guys yeah, for thank, popping thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah I'll wrap awesome it up in a few minutes with you. Yeah. I was waiting to see if uh, Nathaniel Mars was coming up. I, I think he's uh, bitching out. But okay, well, thank you. I'll talk to you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Um. There are no bad Wyatt, bad Robert Wyatt releases. Yes. Oh, Link. Oh, Nathaniel Mars coming up. That's nice. Is it the gonna be the werewolf type or not? I, I hope so. You don't want to see his face. Which one do you want, the werewolf? No, I, I think it's the, the moon decides for for him. He has no <laughs> choice in that today. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't come as a werewolf, it means that it's all fake. It's all fake, right? Yeah. It's all for nothing. All these years of nothing. Oh, jeez. Uh, you built this up. You built it up too much. When I see him here down, I'm going to laugh. If he if, if I don't laugh, it's because he doesn't have the mask on. But I, he's getting that mask ready. He he's then, then don't, don't if, if he doesn't have it, don't just don't put him on because then it would ruin his life. Yeah. And and uh, because we still want to have respect for him, don't we? We like him. Yes, that's true. <laughs> what a conundrum, huh? You know, this is my stream. I like it. I can show all the records. This seven, myself. <laughs> yeah, and you can go. And we can also go and leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cruel. Very cruel. Very cool. Very realistic as well. Uh, just, I guess I'm only showing records to Seb right now, or maybe maybe Jason is interested. This no, is my you're showing third. Them pumping vinyl. Pumping vinyl is watching. No, he said goodbye, I think, like a few minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. It's like 4 a.m. right now where you're at, right? Yeah. I think what records should you have shown to keep William here? Like, I don't know what he listens to. I, I really don't know what. what, Dua, what Dua, Dua Lipo. Uh, Dua, uh, Dua Lipa. Uh, Dua Lipa? Yeah. Uh, yeah he does. Dua Dua Lipa? Is this Dua Lipa? I don't have any Dua Lipa. Well, 412 then... in Norway? Man, uh, Scandinavians really um, don't know how to sleep well. See, he's still here. No, I'm not saying... If, I mean, if you're going to be cordial and you're not going to be uh, saying stuff, you can join, I guess. Oh, look! Hey! <laughs> hey. What's up with that? Uh, no, amazing. Can you talk? Amazing. I rest my case. <laughs> Amazing. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> evening. Well, today I actually How visited. Are you, yeah. I visited uh, are you munching on that microphone? <laughs> are you munching on that microphone? I think he's munching on that microphone. Like, oh. you have, he have, has read right? All right. You have effects for the microphone? I could. Can you put delay on it just just for the hell of it? Well, I mean, not right now, but I should just get like a you know just put my pedal board between the mic and the and the mixer. <laughs> it would be amazing if you if you started if you hijack the stream and you just start doing um uh like a noise set. That would be amazing. How do I select someone to make them big? I don't I don't know what the fuck that is. How how do I make that? 
It's you. You select them first. Oh, uh, I select them. And then you. I think it's the third or the fourth option um, to make them bigger. The third okay. option. Or you just double click on it. You double click on them. This is me. How do just I not unclick this stuff? Between the mic. How it do would I be amazing if you, if you started if you hijacked the stream and you just. What was that? Uh, am I? Am like I? Am I? That would be amazing. Desert how do I select someone to make them big? I don't. I don't know what the fuck that is. How, how do I? There make you them? go. It's, That's amazing. You select them first. Oh, I right, select them. And then you. I think it's the third. What's or the happening? Fourth option to make What's happening? The so third right? option. So YouTube is on. What is this shit? Is is it is, is somebody hijacking my my stream? Is, Calling it's Stunty. Stunty. Yeah, it's, it's Stunty. Stunty's nice side. You know that would be amazing. I would watch that. All right, uh, what are you doing, Nathaniel? What, uh, talk, say something. This. <laughs> you, you to show some record. You want me to show some records? Yeah, show some records. Yeah, show, show, show some records. All right, let me grab some records. Right. He still lives in the in the record store. Put some fucking reverb, like crank it up. Put some distortion. That shit. Who else, like, is there anyone else but Nathaniel who actually lives in the record store? <laughs> I mean, AJ, you do. You don't live in a record store, Stunty? No, yeah, you no, no. Come on now. I think AJK who lives I, in I have, no, Jason, I have a man cave. <laughs> uh, is that the actual term? Uh, Frank 33 uh, RPM would say that? I think uh, James, uh, James Ono. Sinatra, Bono, uh, Crapola uh, coined the term, right? All right. Now, now I know how to make it look. Here's Jason. Jason, who could we manage to make you hated by today? Good question. I don't know. It's tough. Let, let's look at your waxed wall behind you and see who, who we could right. trigger. All right, so I, I asked uh, William to be nice. I guess he wasn't, so I don't know if I should let him up. All right, I'll let him up for like five minutes. Let's see what. Let, uh, uh, William, did, right now, uh, Nathaniel Morris is going to do like his five minute bit. So. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Let, let's see what happens now. All right. What, what records right. are you going to show? Uh, the, uh, just some stuff that's uh, arrived recently. Some Where the fuck the is the arrivals? reverb? I wanted a reverb on that. What, what is this? So I, I asked uh, William to be nice. I guess he wasn't. So uh, I don't know if I should let him up. All right, I'll let him up like five minutes. Nice, nice. Thanks, Tanti. Thanks, Tanti. Uh, uh, William, did, right now, uh, <laughs> what, Nathaniel what is, is going to do like his... I want to mute Tanti. All right. Now, Nathaniel Morris, can you please uh, let, let, let us know what you got? All right. Um, All right. We'll start this off. Actually, uh... This was recommended to me by uh, Fred Dobbs, right. Space Funk. Is, is he a, a Space Funk bro? I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but uh, <laughs> definitely uh, I captures, like the the captures the vibe between captures the vibe in between like Earth and Mars. You know, when you travel, you know, there's a, yeah, you know, the 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 space funk. Where, where do you find that type of record? Is it is it in like in Omaha? Where do you get that type of record? No, Omaha. <laughs> Where you get those records? It'd be nice. Yeah, I, I I bought the record from Amazon. Man. It just got recommended to me. What? Like that record is like fifty years old. What the fuck do you mean? It, it looks old as fuck. I mean, no, the, it didn't. It, it no, it's one of the. It's a it's a soul jazz comp. You know. Get another record. What is it? Why are you taking right. so much time with it? All right. Techno animal. You guys like this? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this is a uh, Brotherhood of the Bomb. It's the reissue of the, the album with some of the extra tracks from the CD. Yes. This is like uh, got, and the William one that they did with all the hip-hop. Because this is with Cannibal Ox, if I yeah, remember correctly. Can Ox, LP, yeah. um, Anti-Pop Consortium, Rubber Room. Rubber uh, Room is so good. It's that Toasty Taylor dialect. How good, how good is it? It's yeah. great. Well, that's that really, really it's left really, field hip hop. Really good. All right, and uh, how's it going? 
I got a VCLT. Right. From Dobbs, actually. This uh, this is one of the things that was included. This is this is the Fred Dobbs Minion. Jungle Viewer. So he he, he really, really likes like, uh, he really likes um like funk music, huh? Yeah, don't you? Uh, you should check out his channel. You know, racism and the funk, they go hand in hand. All right, what else we got? Uh, so you might like this. I picked up the Stockhausen record. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the, the Grove uh, soundtrack. Yeah. What's interesting about this one <laughs> is that it's the only uh, Stockhausen record that was actually an original U.S. pressing. What do you mean by that? It was only released in the U.S.? Yeah. Got right. uh, Indico Zava and the Natives. Right. Yeah. So, how, uh, how, did that record, how, how did that record ever cross the border? That's a reissue. Cross the border from Nebraska? No, but they're all blacks, right? <laughs> what else did I get recently? Oh, Dob sent me this one too. I forgot. He sent me this. Uh, oh, Out of My Voices record. My but voice? check it out. Sign. Oh. Oh, wow. So that was super cool. I'm very happy to... Nathaniel, did you, yeah, buy yeah, this yeah. From, did you buy this from Pumping Rachel? Because it might be a fake signature if you bought it from him, because he's been telling us that he sold records to him, not that he bought records from him. Did I, No, I, did, I didn't get that one from Pumping Rachel. I did get this one from Pumping Rachel, though. Well, I, I heard William sold a record to Robert Paul. What was the record you got? All right. Oh my lord! No way! That's amazing. Who likes that record? You know, I, I have this. Oh, that's outrageous! This is a, a Robert Pollard uh, book that uh, has a bunch of uh, his. Uh, oh, it's all his collages. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is number fifteen, uh, and it, it has like a seven inch at the end. But they're really, they're really pretty stuff to look at. Too much color. Too much what? Too much color. Where there are collages. What, what, what the fuck you want with collage? Nurses will manage to do collage with only zero color. Yeah, because he, he I guess he takes more time than rubber polar. I think he, he like uh, slaps whatever is on, you know, and uh, uh, just stick it out. You know, and then he sells it for like a bunch of bucks. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I'll, I'll wrap this up here because I mean, I got I got the uh, Malchat Doma record. This is uh, some like po that. post punk from Belarus. Yeah, I like that. I, uh, I I don't remember the name of the building. My wife really likes that record. Yeah, it's like uh, some hotel or something. Yeah, like it's that. like a hotel. Uh, Black Moss Super Rainbow reissued their first record, Start of what? People. All right, I, I, I've seen that. And then uh, Mel Banana reissued Fetch. Ooh, nice. I mean, this is this oh, is a great record. Yeah, that's a yeah. good record. So, uh, what what do you thought of the selection, uh, uh, Jason? There. Pretty cool. Be honest. Don't like like you usually do. Don't lie. What the hell? No, it's getting, pretty cool. The, Dobbs the, gave the, him a free signed. The, the tension here, it's 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 amazing. You know, the, the tension, it's it's wild. Sex, sexual tension here is like gone off the roof. So, uh, um, I like. We'll be coming to a secret spin near you. In the yeah, tomorrow. No. N nursed by voices. That would be a great record, wouldn't it, be Stunty? Yes, I'm just thinking that I, I'm. I just realized how a magician I am. I'm, thanks. To, I, I'm the only person who managed to get two, Jason Rojas and Pumping Rachel reunions. Oh my! Yeah. Well, that's impressive, Stunty. How did you manage to pull that off? Yeah, that's my only talent, though. Well, you are very talented, Stunty. But like very one trick pony, though. This might be one of the first VC streams where there are two people making funny voices for prolonged amounts of time. What are you talking about? I, I don't get it. Well, hey, yeah. can I tell you guys something? I yeah. I can show you a record, but I want to show you a trick. I'm I'm more than a one-trick pony because I can take this wig. 
and I can start to talk in French, and then I have a stunty impression. What do you think that, of that? That's a... Uh, what country was that? I don't know. I'm from France. No, I think you're oh, from Oh, that's definitely not France. Well, I don't I guess I will have to work on it. Yeah. It sounds very Russian. It sounds like Belarus, actually. Yeah. Well, I need a Russian stunty. Uh, you think that's a Belarusian accent, uh, Nathaniel Mark? <laughs> I'm going to have to watch stunty videos for so. a week straight. Actually, three weeks straight, like I watched Rachel. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's one way to put it. Um, yeah, it's sounding it's sounding Russian. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe Polish. Uh, that's 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 true. Well, point I was trying to make with this wig, it was good bang for. I, I paid twenty bucks for this wig. That's way too much. That's, that's nineteen ninety nine more than 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 you should have. I you know what I don't know. I think you should I, pay twenty bucks for the wig. Than, uh... I, I had a fun time on Monday, believe it or not. What do you what are you saying? I, don't know. I think it's a better investment than uh, uh, what was that ten than that uh, matching mole's little red record. What? Uh, little red uh, fucker. Hmm. This little yeah. red record. Yeah. What was the reaction after you did your video, William? Did you? Uh, what happened? Which video? Your Monday live stream. Well, I uh, did. You watch Rachel's Ghost by chance? No, I, uh, you okay. know I, I mean, I, I've been getting everyone's reaction, and Rachel's ghost was the one that I was looking forward to the most. And, you know, I think, uh, like anybody, because I'll, ha, like, I'll watch my parodies, and I think they watch theirs, too. And they pretend not to know theirs, but, I mean, I think they pretty much knew what was going on. What do you think, Stunty? Uh, I'm, I'm in France. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, honestly... <laughs> I haven't gotten the reception. Like, I, I don't think people are really telling me exactly how they feel about it. I'm well, getting you. I mean, I mean, I, just just try to be more cordial, I guess. Uh, I, I I understand the the wanna be parody stuff. I get <laughs> yeah. it. I, I mean, I say one of the most vulgar shit that's coming out of someone's mouth here, and uh, you're no Mazzy. Come on, you're no Mazzy, Jose. I don't show my feet as much as Mazzy. But um, wait, what happened on Monday? What are we? What is this? What? What happened on Monday? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what is this? You know what happened? You liar. Nate, you're I, like how, like, I like how your Wolfman mask is just laughing. Like it's just. At all times. It's crooked. I like that it's crooked. It's like you can see you can see the gum from one side, but you can't see the gum in the other side. Is that the new mask? This is the it new did, mask. It, did, right? it didn't arrive this way. I'm starting, you know, starting to have an effect on it. So that so that means that you're like, to my... have you ever eaten with it? <laughs> Your mom. <laughs> oh. So William, you don't think you got the reaction <laughs> you you know you thought was going to happen? Like I think they were people... going to get. I think there are a lot of people who liked it, who are afraid to say they liked it. And I think, I don't know what you think of that, but uh, I was expect expecting more people to be chatting in. I was expecting to have more. Actually, Ruth Ann was supposed to call in and maybe do a Scoozy impression. And you know, just things fell through. And I, the, the, the type of material I'm presenting, I can't really expect people to like latch on to or be like, oh, yeah, let's fucking do like Rojas. Like, I was like, I needed to like maybe reach a point where like I need to work on this shit on my own and not attach your name to what I'm doing. And was it? I don't know if that seems confusing, but I don't know. I mean, was it's it? a weird little uh, thing that I kind of yes. went through. Can you not to change subject, while but... William is talking? Yes. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay. Can... All right. I'll, uh, to finish what I was saying, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought now. Okay, you know, uh... All right, so... There was a stream? Yeah, there was a stream. Monday? Yeah, it was Monday. 
On William's channel? Yes. <laughs> Go on. Yes, it was. There was a stream on Monday. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm still waiting for people's reactions. I think, it, you know, it's got a thousand views. I think it has a low amount of likes for what it really should have. I think it should really have more like 50 likes and like more like 23. I don't know. What do you think, Jason? It's actually very entertaining. It's okay. Very entertaining. Well, let me ask you, did you like the video? Was it? it was Can you make me And you know, it, it, that's, I'll take that as a no. It's all good. <laughs> Do you mean the video meaning the live stream? Did did the video inspire you to hit the like button is what I'm saying. And that's that question goes to you, Nathaniel. <laughs> you're, you're I, I, I have to watch this thing. I love you, Nathaniel. <laughs> you're just like at all times, no comment, neutral. <laughs> oh, I I'm sure I'll have some comments. <laughs> 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 how long is this how long is this thing how long is this video three and a half hours <laughs> oh, I, you, you, chatted what? In the, you chatted in nathaniel i saw you chat in you oh. always chatted oh uh you're busting my fake account was uh <laughs> see i know you're catching on <laughs> what is nathaniel uh, your, your audience yeah, is yes. Nathaniel also admitting that his favorite album is. Are you admitting that your favorite album is also Secret tr Treaties? Secret Treaties. <clears throat> Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> was there a poll <laughs> earlier that I, that I missed? Did, that stuff was amazing. Did, o did Jose have a poll on the. I think it was Jose. Oh, yeah, no, I was, Jose I was coughing uh, uh, a cigarette that I need to smoke. Uh, I'm putting away like the record. Hey, what's up? Um, I don't know how long this shit is gonna be. Maybe, maybe like, maybe like 20 minutes. <clears throat> um, I was yeah. shocked that it was a wig. Yeah, that's that's that stuff. I thought he just took his hat off. See, this is the best, Dave Pounds. I watched about 15 minutes of this crap and I'm gone. It's sad that William is so butthurt he has to put on this so-called parody. I don't know Damn. who Dave Pound is. I don't know. I, 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 love. Shh. Damn. And, and can somebody explain to me why, why does when Massey's on stream and he does like this, they're like shit shoes out? Because he's know. using his phone and it's the StreamYard app. You can oh, all use right. that on the app. Like if so you're on I the think, app. No, I think you can... Uh... Like, I, I can't, you, do it. you know. <clears throat> I've done it on my thing. Whatever. What do you think I have in this envelope? Colonel Mustard in the study. No, I was a condom. Well, uh, anyways, uh, so what, what other records have you bought, uh, Nathaniel Moyes? Oh, you got... <laughs> <laughs> I just showed, like... Show them again. Was it? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm so disappointed. Why? Because we despite all my efforts to yeah. when I asked you to make me big so that you could see the trans porn I was showing in the reflection in my, my glasses, you couldn't see nothing. No, I, I couldn't distinguish from balls to dicks, you know. I was I was, yeah. it was well it was just balls and dicks indeed. But, yeah. Right. I tried my best. You, you did, you did. I, I think I think uh, I need new glasses. That maybe that's the lesson. No, 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 no. I I just went back to check it, and you can't see anything. I failed miserably. Yeah, miserably. I, I somewhere 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 the FBI is like checking up on this stream, and and uh, maybe he thinks we're doing a great job. I, I always, you know, when when AGK is on screen, I always hope that in his glass you can see the porn that he's watching, like the reflection. So I thought I would like. I would be an homage, but like I, I failed. I, my, I, what I think happens is that when AJK is, uh, everything behind the screen is like huge images of porn, like like massive, massive, massive porn. Well, that's why I, that's why I watch his channel. Yeah, just for because you, you're too cheap to to buy your own porn. Well, I mean, it's like 
it's killing two birds with one stone because I can get that vinyl life with it too. Yeah. But which gets you more aroused, AGK or the porn? Um, well, Be I honest, guess well. the vinyl, but uh, God, I guess anything that moves. I guess this is. That's, that's I crazy. guess the whole the whole thing. I guess it's you know. All uh, in you know, AJ, AJK called me ugly today. That was like. He did. Uh, he did. Somebody said, "Hey, Jose Miguel, it's uh, he's very handsome," and AJK was like, "What the fuck? You should get glasses." And I, and it was really funny. I thought it was funny. Well, well, you know. Oh, uh, and uh, apparently AJK blocked uh, a Zem. Well, I, I guess Zem wasn't saying Zem. very nice okay. things to AJK. Yeah. We are protected by what? By the communist party. Yes, that's right. It could, could be true. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, this. I think it's been a, a, a good first stream. Maybe five Great more stream. minutes and then I'll end this uh, bastard of a, of a stream. Uh, it's been interesting. I, I To be honest, I wish that uh, Elliot Cruz had been awakened to the news <laughs> of... of <laughs> Oh me he's live streaming for the first time, but he did not arrive. So that's uh, that's a little disappointing. Dude, Jason wants to DJ. No, uh, he's that's a book. Probably not. That's a book, uh, uh, Jason. I don't think you can play that. But Jason's gonna DJ. Yeah, I guess. Like, oh, hold I got. I'm gonna go jump on the PB Thaw live stream. Right. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm hanging out. I'm I hanging mean, you, out. Can, you can do that. I don't know. I didn't know that. Uh, Rob had a stream. PB Fowl has a stream. <laughs> Everyone's got a goddamn stream. Everybody got a got a bad look. Yeah, I mean, they, this was not a plan. And again, I'm just uh, trying things out, trying to see how many uh, Communist Party. Uh, guess guess who were the guests on on Rob's stream tonight? Mazzy, uh, Jazz Bums, Mike. Mm -hmm. Um. You can do it. I don't. I did. I just all I saw. I did, and Doctor Robert. They were talking about Pablo uh, jazz records, which are pretty cool. You know, interesting conversation. Mm, not really, though. Yeah, I know. Who the fuck depends. is Martin McGrath? I mean, those records. It depends what Chad's gonna charge for them. If he's who the fuck is Martin, Martin McGrath? Block him. Who the fuck is Report him. Out of my personal life. Report him. He, he shouldn't even be guy? talking on YouTube. Not allowed. No, but who the fuck is that? He, he, he's, he's, the, he's a V-Cuck troll. I know uh, all right. about the V-Cucks, Jose. Trust me. All right. No, I don't I don't mind the, the, the V-Cuck. Great they name. They'll be all right. But, you know, they're, they're at war with me right now. And Rob Walker does have the best hair in the vinyl community. Sorry, Stan. It could be argued. But... He has he the best be dye, for sure. He has the best dye. <laughs> I disagree. I think. Uh, Wait, the, are you, uh, do you have the best dye, Jason? No, I think that wig that uh, William showed has the best, you know, hair in the VC. Oh my God! <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> Compliment, Jason. You know, it's been nice to share a live stream with you, Jason. It's been many, many months. Don't bash my Funko Pops. <laughs> what? Who the fuck is it? I mean, so, uh, sorry. Uh, Martin McGrath, I don't know you. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're subscribed. He's a like UK button. VC troll. But, but, yeah. But uh, I hope uh, none of the, your Funko Pops uh, have been uh, diminished in this uh, fine, fine live stream we have. You know, I haven't heard Nathaniel Morris' uh, voice in a while. Can we hear it? Well, I hope that's Mark McGrath and just doing a really bad job of uh, <laughs> trying to lay low. <laughs> It, it could be it it, it 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 may very well be can jason try to play something i'm gonna put the pressure yeah, play some sugar me. ray <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's uh, the fun thing is that william is the only one not laughing because he actually likes sugar ray that's true right. yep I'm a 90s music sucker, what can I say? 
Is this uh, where the obligatory, uh, the first album was really heavy and not like the rest of <laughs> Yeah, you know. Is that where it comes out? Well, it really hits home sophomore year high school, you know. <clears throat> driving around in my first ever car through the, no, through, I, the that... through, 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 through the suburbs. Imagine. My interest in Sugar Ray begins and ends at Lemonade and Brownies. I just think you know that... <laughs> How many degrees of separation you have with someone having lost uh, their virginity to Smash Mouth? Um, personally, I don't know anybody, but I'm guessing like... Well, that'll never go out of style. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees <laughs> I mean, I do know people from Arkansas, so, you know, that might have happened. So what, what is Jason going to play? But as long as there are teenagers what, what watching switch? Shrek. Let me switch the camera. Oh, yeah, do that, huh, baby? Got to keep it professional, stunty. This yeah. music minute is brought to you by Einstein on the beach. Uh, uh, for, an for audio file reissue. An audio file reissue of Einstein on the beach. You know. Butterfly net, you better watch out. Pink Floyd. Sometime when I watch you, I stretch out my hand to touch you, cause it drives me wild to see you flutter fly, you butterfly. Taylor Swift. I won't squeeze you down. Uh, infomercial. Yeah, yeah. Let me switch to Pink Floyd. Brought to you by Black Premier Putin. But take that Hey man, is that Freedom Rock? Jose Moreno wrote to you by Ron Baudry, Dead or Alive. Jason what wants to show you something, Jose, I believe. Yeah, but I, it was all, all out of focus. I couldn't understand yeah, shit. Oh, it's very needy to get you right now. So it's, like, it's like a QVC uh, infomercial. That's right. Are you tired of people yes, from the VC trying to sell you records? Buzzing around your heart. <laughs> are you, are you, I think they're talking to you. I can make good honey. Definitely. This is 
a great way to end my first stream. I wish I could play something. Yeah, I don't think you should end it. Just let us all play records so we don't have to use our free StreamYard minutes. What is that? Gotta give credit to William. Reevaluating with Rojas, episode two. Dude, isn't this such a vanilla is, jazz buns reissues? It's that is one. such a great word. I mean, come on, Jason. I think it should be. No, I think. Show the first one. Show episode one. Come on. It's a good one. Uh, well, yeah, when you do that. So, are you gonna really do this? Uh, I I actually did film this one, but I'm not comfortable. Just like, like, what am I doing here? I'd rather spin records, you know. Was it a was it a disc? It was a huge disc piece on me, wasn't it? No, I wasn't. It's was just actually. Come on, like, it's all right, man. I, I will, you know, it's all good, man. I like the the I, talking it, the truth over is. the song. Very psychedelic. I mean, I just had fun making these. Nathaniel Mars, can you like. Why uh, do you keep doing uh, that? You're gonna noise. Go crazy on the mic. And Nathaniel. I, I think reevaluating with Rojas is. Uh, Nathaniel. The, the, the best series that is not a series. What, what's up? <laughs> Has your wife ever walked on you watching in front of the internet with the mask on? Has that ever happened? Which one? The second one. Second one? No. <laughs> no. Second one's not here. Okay. What other record are you playing? Probably your last couple songs to end your stream. How do I publish this video? I just end it and then. I think it it'll published? just auto publish, yeah. Alright. And then you have the whole night to decide if you want to keep it on your channel, Jose. That's where our choices are made. You know, Jason, since this is the very first video that Jose is doing, playing these songs from the video, if you had more videos before to, you know, even it out. But this is a bit risky for Jose's future, I can't remember since he's not monetized. Yeah, that's true. Machine guns and a bulletproof back. Engine taken from a 707. Sounds like a short way getting to heaven. Stunty's laughing in a minute. You enjoyed that one. Here, right now, yeah. spin after I spin on this channel. Martinez 
I use a Jose's time. I could. I, I, but I, you know, I play whole records. It's kind of what I do, you know. And that's how we should end the stream, right? We'll be here for a while. I got some new box sets. You have some records with uh, uh, run out grooves that are, you know, looped, looped. I have records that are nothing but locked grooves. Yeah. Doesn't Paul Leary look like uh, Michael Wright? Yeah, and his mom. Huh? Michael Richie and his mom as well. Can't you see? I want to stick around some more. The bootleg world. Can't you see? Ah, ah, I want some love from you. Can't you oh, see? Ah, this is ah, so good. I heart. want some love from you. Don't go away now. <laughs> It took a while to like get the sound right. And I have to like give props to Nathan and Mars. Kind of, you know. My shitty coffee. I have that EP in the case. Look at this beautiful one. You guys realize you can barely hear anything because of the music also getting into Jason's microphone so that it kind of compresses everything. Yeah. Is that better for you? Well, but tr let's see, Jason, if you mute your microphone while you play the music. Maybe to see if there's a difference. Oh wait, is the music coming through the microphone, Jason, or is it, uh, no? You're not what? a friend. If the music's muted, I think his mic is as well. All right. I'm so, surprised uh, it hasn't been pulled. Uh, Chris, show a record. Can you lo lower it just a little bit, Jason? A little bit, just a little bit. All right. The Boston Tea Party. That's a cool looking label. Yeah. I like label list lines. I don't. I. I think not a lot of people. Are, are, what is that? Cream. What is it? See us. Oh yeah. I'm not a good shower. I guess no, I gotta sit over here. If Stunty had a, a record, he could show you how how uh, BC UK does it. But uh, but I think he only has that uh, the house on record. Oh look, an unboxing. This is. Top tier of material. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Music and bond. <laughs> wow. Single. What do you think of that, Nathaniel Mark? Uh, this is a record? What is it? No. Nope. It's a postcard. La Gal Galette Noire. Hashtag racism. I mean, I assume it's a pretty cool record if it's uh, if it's going into the Stunty Library. Yeah, yeah. So. No, it's a VCLT to Ron Baudry. Uh, is that uh, is, what is that? Dolly Parton, HBO. What is that? 
It looks like from the 1500s. It's Marilyn Monroe. All right, she doesn't look like her. <laughs> what do you think of that record? Is it going to the stunty library? Yeah. yeah. It, it, come on, it's got everything. It's, got, it's a picture disc. It's got like... PVC? PVC. Uh, of of gassing uh, PVC sleeves. Uh, what else? It's got like misgendering. It's uh -huh. got um, and Gabber techno probably. I mean, uh -huh. what what uh, else? Sure. Oh, that's a bootleg. What Ooh. is that? Uh, Pink Floyd. Uh... Oh no, that's not a bootleg, right? Yeah. What is it? Um... The Brazilian press. There's a promo. Oh, Japanese. Oh, yeah. Brazilian press. Interesting. The Nile was, song. It was near mint. Is that of near mint? Yeah. Yeah. Near mint with some stuff. What, what finish, is you it? know, like this kind of like wobbly finish. Very exclusive, yeah. Water enhanced. You got some hip hop, Rojas? It's probably Look at in him. another box. You Look at him. You know that he's. You know that Jason. Jason's nickname is Jason from the block. What's that cover? No, wait, what's that cover? The Flat Boys? What is that? You may need to play that next. That's a Rocky Rocker. Uh, why, why were you showing Chris? Sorry. It's a Rock Ruling Record. What, what were you showing? Look, I don't know what I was showing. I put it back. I got something for you, Jose. Alright. But I think we got like a just. Jose, I think we got the perfect panel. This needs to never change. The, the singing from Mount Air? Denon? Right? This is the singing. Jason? Do you have any music that wasn't made when Mazzy was young? Sure. But I was wondering if Nathaniel Mars, are you hooked up to play music? You should play the Fat Boys. You know? Come on, Chance, come up. Let's yes, bring Chance on. up. Come on, Chance, come on. We're healing wounds in the VC today. Asses are being rolled. <laughs> Is that, is that a thing? Oh? Oh, Chris. Oh, Chris, Jose. My computer's not in here. We can see you. Chris was showing uh, 7 inch, Jose. What? Put Chris on. Put Chris on, big screen. Got this out of focus camera with bad lightning, so we can guess the records. That's perfect. Uh, Pretty bad I can't see. Oh, it's Los Icos. I recognize the label. It's Los Icos, my, right? My camera's not focusing. Let me adjust. I think it's the lighting. Yeah. Every time I turn around. <laughs> You know, Jose? Jose, can you make me big? Yeah, of course I can. Now since that we, I've learned. Since we talked about the big guy quite a, f a few times tonight, let's bring him on. Uh, that, that's the only thing that was missing. Can yeah. Nathaniel Wire show the, the Dubs records that he was showing up a while back? I'm, I'm going to play the Fat Boys record. Hold on. Uh, that's... Come on, Chance. That's... That's a coward move. I like that my baby has production now because look at all these records playing, right?
What? What do you thought of that audio file quality vinyl? Audio file. Is that was that the Fat Boys? Yeah, the that was the Fat Boys. Boys. I remember the breakdown. Hey, those, I, had those that that. I forgot break. that I cranked the levels a little bit for the uh, for the mic. So when the, when the it's funny, uh, Nathaniel, because it's on, like, it like, like I'm not surprised you have that because it's kind of like the bridge. Uh, after that, you go to Midbeat Manifesto, obviously. Obviously, obviously. Hey, what happened? What happened? Uh, 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 a chance. I want him to come up. I, I mean, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I want to heal wounds here, and I don't want to do his shit. But uh, every everybody's been uh, nice in the best behavior possible. So, Beware, Jose. Your your name might become Doctor Jose. What well, I'm an engineer, so you can call me Ingeniero Jose. No, That's I want to call you Doctor Jose. Ooh. That sounds extra crispy. All right, so who's who's playing in the record or whatever? Uh, uh, that those Psychos Forty Fives are look really fucking clean. At least the labels, right? This is the rare one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen that one. But help me look at the book. I thought I had six. Which one am I missing? Um. Um, the well, the one the one you just show here, it's in yellow. It's in yellow. All right. So this is the DJ so, promo. So I don't have that then. No, so but you have. It's better than the one you one, have. One, two, three, four. How many? Are there different ones. Are there one, two, three, four, five, Uno, six. Dos, tres, cuatro, six? Yeah, six. So I'm missing one. Um, I'm. I'm going to try to pronounce it. And to Samante, this is the yellow one. Carmen de Fuerza. What? Which one? That? Carmen. Fugitivo <laughs> Alcatraz. Cementerio, Camisa de Fuerza. 
That one? Yeah. Can you show that? Um, I can read How do we find out which one I don't have? Oh, Camisa de Fuerza. Yeah, that one. You got that one. El Infierno Salvaje. What's the B-side on that one? Demolición. Ah, El Entierro. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, so it, it goes like this. It's like this. It's like this A, okay. A B side, A B side. So te amo. You have te amo. I saw it. Fugitivo del Catrán. I saw that one. I have te amo. Yeah. So you're missing. So demolition. I think there's like two versions. Oh, Anna. You don't have Anna. That's I my have favorite. Anna and now I have Anna and come on. Jose. Jose, yes. can you explain? Is it like Chris is trying to convert to Judaism right now? What is going on? No, so so he he's showing some seven inches from uh, Peruvian uh, greats Los Psychos, which is a proto punk band from Peru that are incredible. The way he was singing, it was very growly, like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was saying. He's trying to convert to Judaism right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because he's trying to demolish stuff. Is that what you're saying? My <laughs> wife is Peruvian, and we yeah. went all throughout Peruvian finding records many years ago. Yeah, Anna. So I don't know which one you're missing. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Yeah, I don't know which one you're missing. So Te Amo. Um, no, I have Te Amo. So you're not missing any. No, you've got six. Come on, seven. you have come on. Yep. So you're not missing any. That's what I thought. So that's what I want to leave the video on with you. Talking about it? these records, you already sent them to Jason. He can play them. I bet you they won't get taken down. No, I think they would. I think Monster Records uh, own those. Was it? Kevin Ayers got blocked in Belarus and Russia. Oh. When I put it up yeah. on YouTube. That's the two countries that always like you. When you know you, when you see the first country is Belarus, Russia, you know you're good. That the rest of the world is with you. Was it? Do you think? Do you think it would be okay uh, to, to show my dick if I'm not hard? Um, controversial, controversial. Maybe another stream. Maybe, maybe. In the... Oh, there we go. Wait, how do I add someone? Oh, I can add someone. Wait, 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 wait. So I have, I'll, I'll, I'll have to kick, yeah, you know, uh, what do I, I do? Can I can go, I'll go, I'll go. Oh, you don't have to go? All right. You can take me out. But can you, can you comment audio file? Hit the like and subscribe, please. Audio file. <laughs> Chance. Chance. What a gentleman. Stunny, hey, listen, Stunny is nothing but a gentleman. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it reminds me of someone, but I I, I don't know. I don't want to say. Hi, how you doing, Chance? Thanks I'm for stopping by on this uh, weird live stream with. I like, didn't uh, listen. I'm sorry. I didn't see your note. I was doing podcast oh, stuff, right? so I didn't see your note. Sorry. It was incredibly impromptu, to be honest. Uh, I'm, the, I'm just honored to share the, the dais with Chris the Vinyl Piper who oh, yeah, yeah. has more heat in his Instagram feed than I have in any video I've ever done. So, Chris. Chance, welcome. all your cover photos have been an inspiration. I'm like, how does he do that? So I've been looking and I'm trying to do all this stuff. And, and so, and seriously, Hell you have problem. this. Love it. But who's controlling the music here? I'm I'm, I'm late. Uh, so I'm, Jason, I I have I don't even know how you do it. Yeah, or Jason's playing on it anyway. Oh, it's oh, it's the Wolf Man. Hey, where's the gloves, Nate? Nate Mars, where are the gloves? The Wolf gloves are missing, man. Uh, I want the you full you want them? No, no, no. I'm fucking with you. No, <laughs> I like that he he puts I'm the microphone all the way inside his throat. <laughs> I, I love the fact you look for them. That's all that matters. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're around. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to put up uh, any comments by... Uh, they really make like, queuing things up, you know. No, I, listen, I get, it. I, get it. I get it. Practical. I get it. Do hey, you have any broadcast records? I, it's been a while since I listened to broadcast. Yeah, give Wait. me a second. Yeah, you have? 
Well, you know, uh, I don't know why Slinty had to leave. I guess uh, Mr. William Defoe hasn't. Uh, no, I, you you have the free version, right? So that means you only got six seats. I think is is what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stunt, you know, Stunty is being a gentleman. William is having so much cool. fun right now, uh, right? Those blocks look like like uh, like. Well, yeah. I would pump myself with those if I had them. So, uh, so Chance, uh, I feel like I know you, but I don't know you. I feel like I know you. Watching your videos and your is stick, that from a just you know, animated and I was messing around with the video camera and like what would Chance do? And I'm like, it just felt no, so unnatural. Do the opposite. Do the do, do you, Chris? Don't worry about it. like I got uh, Tourette's and AIDS and ADHD. It's it's like a, a poo poo platter of things you don't want. Trust me. But my first video, I'm like, this is Los Psychos, and this is Side That's A. That's how they all are, though. You got, you got, you got, you got to make your own lane. You got to figure out your own calling. That's just the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> Jose and I are doing something special on Friday. Jose is going to be beamed down into LA, really? and we're going to talk about one of his favorite artists on a on a virtual set. Hang on, so you're beaming down like like a you know, like a like, like an Star alien? Trek. Like Star Trek? Like yeah, Sulu? Like yeah. Wow. He's crossing the border without paper. <laughs> <laughs> he found those underground tunnels. Congratulations, Jose. Good yeah, work. Yeah. Good. So, uh, let's, let's go people around. Hang on, let's, I got a speck on my screen. Looks like I have a, a cup in my teeth. Uh, my big giant horse teeth. Sorry, right, sorry about that. And Jose, this is a good time to ask Chance some advice because he's been doing the live stream for a while. This is your first one on how to do anything. How do I end? It? How do you end it? Make sure to make sure to hit end record because you don't want to you don't want a hot mic. That happened to us once, and I had to kill the whole show. So. Right. Yes, <laughs> hot Mike McGillicuddy over there. <laughs> So make sure to hit end recording, the most important piece that you can have with it. So when I end it, I just put end stream and it pops up in my YouTube. Well, it should be well, it's, it's a, it should be up there now, but yeah, it'll be it'll be like uh, your past tense. It'll say in the past. Yeah, I guess. All right, let's. Uh, anybody wants to take this uh, Abdul uh, humble Mexican bus driver? No bueno. Who the fuck is Abdul? My question is, whose photo is that? I love it. I love that. That's whole, Hunter Biden. Whole, Come on, that's Jose. Hunter. Come oh, on. that's Hunter Biden. All right. Huntzilla. Huntzilla. Come on. Right. I was going to end this for like two hours. Ago, but that's we have we have a record to break tonight. We're going for twenty five hours, isn't that right? <laughs> His first stream. No, we're going to George Borden. Hey, you know what? Did we? Catch the audience from the PB Thaw stream. This is huge. We got Jason Rojas, concert buddy. We got Jose and Nathaniel Mars. This should have minimum 150 viewers. This should be Rachel's ghost numbers right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad my production value. I think it's right. Can I get a record real quick? Yes. Well, who's, who's playing the music first? Is this Rojas? Okay. Well, I just want to show a record here. This is a. Uh, Ernest Tubb in concert. Buddy Emmons on the steel guitar. I don't know. Is this a punk record? I'm a, punk. I'm a punk record. I love Ernest Tubb though. There's an there's an Ernest Tubb uh, record store day release coming out. Did you guys know that? Well, let's let's ask the panel. Uh, Nathaniel Mars, did you know there was a uh, Ernest Tubb? Mr. Mr. Tubbs' uh, record coming out. Mr. Tubbs. Uh, you know, I went through the the list, and uh, Ernest Tubb uh, didn't jump out and grab me. You know, the the kind of of, of guests we have today, we have Baggy's wife, apparently. Uh, good, good for Baggy. That's all I can say. Good for Baggy. Yeah. Good for Baggy. Uh, 
uh, not sponsored by uh, Chatterbait. You know, Chatterbait. I, I uh, Jose, don't listen. Don't insult any potential sponsors. Chatterbait, OnlyFans. Look, you, you take it where you can get it, it is, dude. It is true. Hit some coins. Send me some coins to uh, Chatterbait. Uh, hit the likes, subscribe. Right. It's such a great stream today. I think I've learned nothing, but I'm really grateful for. Hey, hey, Chris, what time did you have to get to Record Safari to get literally the hottest records they had at the place? Because every everyone you grabbed was like everyone I would have totally went for. So oh, this past weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got like the you got the uh, the Bob uh, Seeger. You got the Catch a Fire. I think you got a third one too. I forget what the third one. Was. Yeah, the Catch a Fire. I saw. That Can one. I show some records? Yeah, yeah, yeah show them. <laughs> this was Saturday. Oh, Right. Will you issue a kaleidoscope? Okay. Not kaleidoscope. Uh, which which kaleidoscope? Supernatural fairy tales. It's not kaleidoscope. These are all from Alex's shop. This is all Saturday that I got on Saturday got from Alex's shop. It's the yeah, right there. Uh, That's promo copy too, right? Yeah. WLS or WLP. Yeah, that's 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 tough right there. Wow. He's got so many promos. It's so hard living yeah, close where, to where, There must be a lot of like radio stations. Oh, is that a promo as well? He gets all the industry people. Mm. Is that a promo as well? No, this is not. Yeah, like, he gets that. all the industry people. So I've I've been here since ninety six and I've I have so many promos just because of the location. Nielsen? Mm. Oh, you got that one. <laughs> what was that? Nice work. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tag box. Last one. Just to finish. Um, the Van Halen. I never had this. I have that one. That's that's a good one. Uh, I I've, I've, I've never, never known which one's yeah, on it's the, the red one. vinyl, right? Red yeah. vinyl. Um, you know, I didn't. I yeah. I don't never know which uh, Van Halen records are hard to get because I see the basketball one once a while here, the Mexican pressing. And I know that one's difficult to get. The basketball one, I'm not familiar with that one. This is one that's like looks like a basketball. Are you talking? That, there's a Pearl Jam picture disc that looks like a basketball. No, I don't no, know no, about no. a Van Halen one. Yeah, there's the Van Halen one. Yeah, I don't know the Van Halen one. Yeah, yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. It's Pearl Jam, the '91 promo, that early thing. Yeah, the it's ten. A yeah, it's ten. So Saturday was seven. We got okay. there at seven. The next guy got there. At Eight. I'm only saying that because there's only seven people watching the stream. Um, and the next guy got there at seven, and then ten people got there at nine. And it mm -hmm. opens at ten. Mm -hmm. Alex gets there at seven thirty, and he's like, "What are you looking for?" And, and I and, uh, and I, he tells me how much, and so it's it's been cool. And he's nice too. Does he? That's so with, that's with, a, with this, which one? Are you, wait, that's a, what are you talking about? Basketball. That's a basketball. Jose, that's the fuck album. I don't, how do you not know? I that? can see why you would say that. But it is—it's it's like a basketball uh, uh, texture. Except, it's except, it, except it's red. Isn't that an orange? I'm pretty sure it's a football. But well, I, it, I no, it's someone's skin, and it ain't mine. It's it's foreskin, Jose. And if it's red, that's you really need to be a doctor. And then that was. There's a good record. The web. Have you guys Were bought you of this record, Nathaniel? Mark? Record Safari's web Did drop on what? tonight. You love this record? Broadcast? Yeah, for sure. All right. What are we saying, Chris? Have you guys bought anything from Record Safari's webcast or web drop on Wednesday nights? No, there's too much competition for me. Like I used to get them when he was doing it at the Glass House. I used to I used to be able to cyber sneak some of that. And even when he started doing Record Safari, the store and the web. I was able to sneak them, but now people, like literally, you have to be on your device and literally count the seconds before like six o'clock my time, eight o'clock, I think. Yeah. Or, is it six o'clock his time, eight o'clock my time. time? You got it. Like, if you don't, like, it's like, the best record I've gotten from him recently was like a, a genuine first pressing. That's how desperate I was. I was like, I'll just take the genuine first pressing. And that was it. Hey, what's up, Eddie? You have to do Apple Pay. And so Alex told yes. me, he's like, you have to do your phone, you have to do Apple Pay. 
I go in at 5.50, put something already in my cart to make sure it remembers who I am, and then I remove it from my cart, and then you refresh right at 5.59. Yeah, no, that's but true. Right. It's tough. You don't have time to read the description. You just have to go buy pay. Yeah, I was literally at an Eric Clapton show trying to buy a stupid record right at the drop, and I didn't use Apple Pay. I had to, my credit, you know, I was going to the credit card screen, so now you've got two or three screens, and by then the shit was gone. That's, yeah, that's my bad. Look at this Chris $500 Tesla bill. Oh, impressive. Is that, is that two cents? <laughs> two cents American? Oh, it's like $30. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Oh, that's not bad. Look at the wheels. There's no whales in Mexico. What kind of shit is that? What is this shit? Of course, in in uh, La Paz. What is this shit? What is it? <laughs> yeah, Baja, Baja California. Yeah, California. You know, Me Mexican currency is really pretty. There's an eagle. In okay. This is a currency channel now. Can you get your coins out, please? Yo, you gotta send me some more of that, Jose, you know. You know, uh, Nathaniel Morris was asking me, like, hey, can I see that 20 uh, 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 peso bill? I gave it to him, and he just put it on his wallet and he never gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, he only took it. But uh, that's why today's sponsor, right? Today's sponsor is Clorox uh, uh, White. For when you get gist on your record. So, Jose, is this indicative of the last three hours? We've got a Clorox live read. No, no, no. We've, Actually, it's been a read. reference whale, whale pictures. That... It's been it's been fine. Even William had his moments of doubt when he was losing his mind. But he, look, he's calm now, right? Look, hey, listen. Hey. When, when William is focused, he can show some good records. I'll give him a compliment. Yeah. Well, the only one I can give him. But when he's focused, he shows good buddy, records. We were doing so well. It's You're true. I'm not. I'm not blowing man. smoke. You, when you want to show good records, you show good records. The other stuff, I mean, I can't. I the guy said something nice, William. He, he 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 said something nice. He said something I did. nice. I did. Hey, I got a right, good show, record. Show a record. Just show a re fucking record, William. Show it. You, you want me to show you a record? Yeah, yeah. Just show one. I, I mean, this is a pedophilia record. What is this? It's, I'm adopted. By oh, Ron right. Haven. It, My life looks, story. It looks more than thirty cents, less than a dollar. <laughs> this is, is one that of the cover VG that pick up the minus? Goodwill. That, has that a cover weird is cover. VG plus 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 plus. VG plus to actually triple plus. I, I, that's the only record that I like. Is that is, what, who's playing music now? I don't know who's like designated. Oh, all, right, all right. Oh, he DJ Rojas. Oh, he has the bill there. Oh, you kept it. it. He kept oh it, yeah. God. So, concert buddy, were you, did you, so you didn't like my Rachel impression? I mean, I don't know what that was. It was. I, I, I'll give you. I'll give you oh, another compliment. You, you, you hung in there for a long time. I'll give you it that. It was way too long. Give a little credit. If, this, if this, this is, listen, been... take take the flowers I'm giving you. You hung in there. That's all I can say. It, it, it could have been two hours less. Oh my god, I just got a Discogs order! It was tough. Cool? It's like see through. Yeah, it is see through. Yeah, of course it is. Chance, your one liners are great. Just winging it and coming up and these little zingers you do. Oh, hey, listen, Chris, you can keep copying me all day. This is how it's done. Yeah. I love this. I'm glad I came up for this. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Elliot Cruz back in old Mexico. Oh, come on. And this is uh, uh, Marvin. Oh, uh, kicking a man while he's down. Jose, that's not Why? good. Wait, how, how do you guys do it? Wait, Marvin Tur I Listen, Marvin turned state's evidence and he's in witness protection. Give the guy a break. Really? Are you kidding? <laughs> You're kidding. He's been but, but MIA maybe for I'm a not. long time. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> but he's been MIA for a long time, right? So yeah. I, I, look, I think he look has. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see issue. it? He's, been, he's smiling. What's that? He's smiling. 
So Jose, are you bringing are you bringing this currency? Is that rice fields? Or no? Wait, Wait Jose, that hold that up again. What? That was racist, Nathaniel. No, Michael. When they, they put Michael Rice fields on the currency. I know that's. I I hope he's not watching. You don't want to get on his bad list. You know, I I once told him no to something. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm cool with Michael. Rice fields said, and he called me an asshole. Doesn't matter. I'm cool with Bryce Fields. He's just not cool with me. One of those things. I, I think I think Bryce Fields gets up, stretches his arm, and then he like he he wants to kill someone, but he doesn't. That's that's basically the thing. Let's be nice to Mike Bryce Fields. What is that? Like three dollars? Uh, twenty pesos. It's like uh, like two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, like, you know, disrespecting our hero? I'm not disrespecting any heroes. I'm, I'm just showing that you can do a smiley thing. Uh, hey, uh, Chance, <laughs> I thought I thought the Austin show was next week. It's like hey, May. It's in What's May, it, guys. It, it's the first weekend of May, Jose. I was buying the fucking tickets like for no, next week. no, 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 no. Come on. All right. That's We're gonna just. Better. I just want to throw this out here real quick, and you guys can carry on. But uh, I might have 17 troll accounts, but none of them look like Ron Haven here. That's all I'm gonna say. Who, who's Ron Haven? I don't know. I don't know the guy. Somebody's in here though. Yeah, we don't need those words on the screen. Ron Haven, secret video island. I mean, if you want that language on your channel, Jose, I mean, this well, is your channel. Well, just just so you know, in Spanish, pelo means heart. Touche, so I could be, forgot so that. He could be Latino, right? What the fuck am I doing? I guess I forgot yes. there, Jose. To be honest, uh, this stream was really uh, in its best behavior a few hours ago. By, by this by this time, my, my mind is like, I, I want to eat. I want to have to put all these records back in, you know. I understand. Uh, this, I stream, understand. this stream is groundbreaking. It, it is groundbreaking. I think so. Wouldn't you say, I Jason? show this record a lot. When, when I go to Texas, I'm going to have my boots on. I'm going to have my... Are you going to have spurs on your boots, Jose? I want spurs on your boots. I'm going to this gatefold in, in front of me. Right. Jose, we're gonna get you a tramp stamp by the end of the weekend. That's a that's oh, a yeah. that's your buddy this guarantee. Is, this, this is my tramp stamp, right? With the track the listing. Oh, right. Rojas, you got you're, you're gonna line up a tattoo artist for us, right? He can work on the cheap or she. They can work on the cheap. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my rabbi that I'm gonna. Oh, Jose is gonna be laying, you know, face down in the tattoo table with a Domino's pizza by his face. And a tram stamp being tattooed on his backside. Ready for yeah, I'm it? Gonna, I'm gonna tattoo the uh, uh, Rome Boadries, the front <laughs> of, like, 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 stretch it out. It'll be beautiful. Chance, did you just get a a new Seattle LP, a Nirvana? Are you? Did you show something recently? You spent some money for? Uh, from let me think. But you talked about a record, a CS Soundgarden or something interesting. Not, not Soundgarden. Um, why? Why you said he just saying that I should avoid him? What? What? What I do? What? What? What do I do? Eddie, Eddie has a, a fear of tramp stamps. I don't know if you knew that about Eddie Jose, All but right. uh, it's it, it's crippling and debilitating. Um, what did I just show? So Chris, I just I just showed. I got Black Crows and Morica. Um, I think what else I picked up. Uh, da, 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 it was like da, Nirvana. Da. If, God, I thought you talked about. I haven't. I haven't got. I got in utero a couple months ago. That was a couple months ago. Oh, you showed a uh, Untempo pilot. Well, that was that's the acoustic sounds and that's the uh, the switcho changeo. I wanted to call out because it sounds good, but they they fucked you on the laminate cover. Who's playing music? I don't even know. I am fool. Me. Mar Mars, are you coming to Austin again or what? Well, uh, not this time. Oh, fuck. 
but uh, they, they strong armed me into coming. I wasn't going to come, and then they uh, Louis, Louis threatened to jump off a bridge. So at that point, I felt I needed to make an appearance. Uh, uh, please, people, remember to hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss my next stream in four years. You know, Jose, I didn't even know you really had a channel. This is good to find out. You know how I found out about this? So, Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot. How do you think that sounds? That record you just flashed up. I haven't opened it. Oh, okay. Well, spoiler alert. Uh, oh, really? Put, put your phasers on uh, under underwhelming. Oh, that sucks. Now, Michael Fremer thinks it sounds great, but, you know, Michael Fremer is also a professional comedian, so keep that in mind. I prefer sap. But I, I bet, I bet that uh, Michael Fremer rolls the best, thickest joints in the VC. Well, you know, back in the day, he was called Bluntmaster General. So, I, Jose, I think that's actually true. It, it could be, it could be, it could be something along the lines that I've heard about. No, I, I don't know. I mean, he he he's told the story about a, you know seventeen times about you know his roommates and you know like how he was like all angry that uh, he found out they were. Smoke a dope. I don't know. Oh, he's a narc. I don't. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, uh, somebody wants to send Perhaps me a dono. Uh, uh, he's told that story. Uh, please send me some times. donations. Yeah, do you have a Patreon, Jose? <laughs> uh, you can send me PayPal, like uh, like make money, <laughs> like wherever, whatever reason. If you want uh, some some uh, some uh, some money. Uh, you can, I keep putting Nathaniel Morris, uh, the DJs, uh, both DJs, you know, you can uh, tip them if you want. All right, right, Jason? I, I guess that's a shrug of, of life. This has been uh, such a great uh, stream so far. I, I think that, uh, that uh, there's uh, nothing better than uh, healing hearts and the uh, and, uh, VC, like uh, Rob Walker once said, you know. So, Jose, since I've been on, I tried to go to eBay, but since I'm yeah. on your stream yard, it's in Spanish. I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. It's no, that's not Spanish true. It's just where we collect here. No, it says end stream. That's not true. Now, hang on, I'm going to try yeah. that trick. So, if I go to eBay, it's going to be in Spanish? No, mine's. Oh no, it's never mind. It's Italian. Oh, an Italian no. guy wants me to buy him a ticket, and he sent me a link, and I've been trying to look at it, and he sent me the Italian link. Italian, Spanish. Chris, don't the same. don't click the link. That's phishing. I, I've had t multiple corporate seminars on phishing emails. Don't click the link. It's gonna <laughs> fuck your shit up. You know, music on vinyl. Doesn't do a lot of reissues when when they need to. I, I don't understand why. Well, but, even uh, even they, that Alice in Chains they did, but I mean, look at the jacket. It's pixelated. Like they don't they don't take a lot of quality control in the complete yeah. presentation. It's pressing CD masters onto vinyl. That's the thing yeah, about that. music on vinyl. I mean, it, well, I, they do okay, but. They, they did release like one or two records that were like all analog like two years ago, but they nobody gave a crap about them. So Which they, one? They, they, I don't remember. There was like some European thing that I didn't know about. Like well, I mean, they, they sound good if you don't mind CD quality, but it, I, it's very excessive for the quality that you get. I mean, I, I just think it's an overdone product, but that's just me too. I mean, yeah. So, Chance, do you think I show bad records on my channel? I didn't know. I, I said when you're focused, you can now you don't show some good records. Don't start, you're showing I'm the focused, though. <laughs> don't start the fighting, William. No, I, just, I, I wasn't fighting. Was just, I, He's asking a question. It's a, it's a fair question. question. It's a fair no, question. I think this is, you know, Jose, I want to thank you. Amazing record, but um, I wanted to thank you, Jose. Because I don't think we really know each other that well, you know. Well, uh, if you're nice to me, I'll, I'll be nice to you. I'm a nice person. Well, then uh, don't do it. I, I think you guys have the wrong impression. Well, I'm really happy that I got this first pressing. The cover, it's not that good right now, but... Uh, uh, Slime Dog, uh, 
Yes. Yes. Welcome. yes. Welcome. This, this is the gayest community ever. Yes. Welcome. What is what is your what what size cock ring do you wear? I, I need to know. Please let me know. In the you remember that below. episode in uh, It's Always Sunny when uh, uh, Danny DeVito's cock rings to like balls every like five minutes? Must have missed that one, Jose. <laughs> oh really? For real? I, you could you could hear like bomb like that. All right, is that a first pressing like mine? Yeah, dude. yeah mine is not it's, like the cover is not in the best shape. I but to be honest. I paid twenty dollars for this, so I'm really that's happy. That's a great deal. I mean, that's a record people I've seen pay a hundred over hundred bucks for for a solid. No, cost. this is this is way more than a hundred bucks. This is like two hundred. This is neither of these are the ones. These both have like the Stooges on the center label. Oh that's no, the, this one doesn't. Oh okay. Okay. Well, you got a very cool pressing there, Jose. Yeah, it's a Pikmin. But... This rivals the Gunkles. I don't know what that is. You don't know the, the vinyl community. Gunkles, that's Robert Fifth and, and Hub Tunes and those guys. All right. I like Robert. I think he's so fun. So funny. I like Robert. Robert. Robert's good. He's got a good channel. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say a quick story about Poppers. Um, friendly, family, family friendly story. But, uh, I, you know, I have a label, right? So I, um, I use to clean... Uh, I got a, like a new machine a duplicator and I needed to clean the heads and I didn't know that poppers originally were for uh, cleaning tape heads that's what they were invented for and then uh, you know somebody sneaked them and you know what happened but um, so I, I had to go to a, a sex store just to, to buy to get clean the heads like hey you, do you sell poppers here like yeah and I just took a moment like clean them that's my popper song. What do you think of that, uh, Nathaniel Moy? Captivated. Captivated. Speechless. He's about to he's eat his microphone. He's about to cry. Did someone crying. say something about me uh, like on the stream on Monday? Is that why we're... What stream are we talking about? You can play the next record if you want, Nathaniel. I'll have to watch it for myself. Play the next record? Yeah, play. Pick something. Is this... Who the fuck is slaying me, though? I thought it was stunning. Alright. What do you... Jose, you got anything you want to hear? Um... Uh, Jason, do you have anything you want to hear? Well, I mean, you, if you have any... Do you have uh, music to play in the dark, too? No. One? No. How do you do it? Thing. I don't know. The, the massive group? Uh, let me see. What else? The what did I, I don't even know him? how I did that. I don't know how you're doing it. You know, I, I'm debating if I could keep this stream up because it's uh, very chaotic. Hey, Jose, could you full screen me maybe? Maybe it would work that way. All right, but don't show your dick. Oh, that's how you get the fireworks to go off. All right. Yeah, nothing's happening. I'm not channeling my inner Mazzy well enough. All right. Oh, nice. You want to play that? All right. Oh, and Jose, Jose, God bless you. He whips it it's out. It's my record. It's my record. Put it out. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. That makes more sense then. All right. You want to see this? Oh, shit. This is currently on Discord. I think the cheapest one right now is $150. Oh. Right, well, no, I'll, I'll grab something for you. Right. Mercy by Mercy. Mercy. This is this is a, a record I love with all my life. I don't know why Nate uh, and Nathaniel is gonna put it right now. It's, it's gonna make people cry, but all right. Uh, Elton John doing coke on the way to church. Great comment, Seb. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that song, but but I wish I did. 
There's a Beck song that's called uh, MTV Makes Me Want a Small Crack. So that's the first 7 inch by Beck. Yeah, is that on Bong Load? No, 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 for real. That's that's the first 7 inch you ever released. No, I'm, but I'm asking, was it on Bong, bong Load Records, do you know? I, I, I don't know. I think the first label he was on was um, K Records? Right? I'm oh, asking the wrong guy. I came up here to be informed, Jose, not confused. Come on. Well, let's find out. This is. Oh, here it is. Discogs, so tell us. Yes. Uh, I, I guess so, yeah. Oh, it, it says that it's on the looser single. So it's the B side? What? It's I, the B side of the that. loser single? Yeah, yeah, it's on it. I haven't uh, watched Santi. Why would I watch Santi? Hey, I'm going to give Santi my, stop, my spot back. I just want to pop up, say hello. Pay, well, respect. pay respect to Jose. Thanks, Jason, thanks for uh, having such a good time talking to you. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to endure this, but I'm I'm thank you for being here. They should have ended like two uh, hours. You're probably ago. right about that. That's the thing about live streams; they always go about an hour too early. Well, I like you, Chance. I don't. I want Chance. Chance. Uh -oh. I want you to know I'm not mad at you. Okay? Are we cool? William, I, I I told you I sent you that note after that after that next day. I, I had no animus, and and you okay, did what you I wanted mean, to do, and that's that's your business. But you know. I mean, if you if if we need to have a private chat, you know, just let me know. I'm just like you know, I. Let me put it this way: if if I was really butt hurt at you, I wouldn't have come up here to support Jose. I would I would I would have reveled in my butt hurtness. So. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. You know, I I just. Um... Now, now that said, what, are you interested in a, in a '93 Buick? Because I do have a '93 Buick available on the lot tonight. <laughs> I like interested. your sense of humor, man. Hey, listen, just roll with it. You guys are gonna roll with it, man. All right, all good right, to see you guys. Well, Be good, right, Chris. Hey, nice to meet you directly, Chris. Be good. Bye, Chance. All right, hey, Chance. Okay. See you, Nate. We're, Be good. We're gonna be here for 15 more minutes, uh, and by the end of it, I hope Nathaniel Mars plays that a beautiful, beautiful Merce Beat record that uh, he support me by by buying. But I, I took like forever to ship, so he wanted uh, to have it in his hand. He's on next. It was six months. It was not six <laughs> months. You fuck. It was. Not, it was like three months, and then you were like, oh, you're it, was, it was at least. Right? Wait, no. Let's see. When did I order it? Like, like March. Oh yeah, Last because year? that was the record that the pressing plan uh, gave me like four months later. Yeah, it was like whenever the Vibractance uh, pre-order went up. Yeah. Yeah. Jose, can I show a record? And then I got the records in Austin, so you do the math. Yeah, like October. It's so sad that no one wants to be William's uh, fake internet friend. All right. All right. Oh, that's pretty I cool. I know that. I know that. But you know what? Uh, Chris, you know what? You know what I have here? The extra limited edition picture disc that's blowing your mind right now, right? <laughs> uh, that's amazing. It, it, are, is it Cole? Uh, like Chad would say, is it Cole Harmon? <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, nice. Uh, that's it. You have the ball and chain. What is it? What's the name? What's the name of that song? Ball and chain. Ball and chain. No. All right. I see. Uh, let's just go through the comments here. I guess I'm a charge now. Seb. Just block me on Pilmer's next stream. Can Stunty come back or something? Good. Do what you will with that information. All right, next. Wait, I see a, a comment here from Sam. Hey, look at that. 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 Hey
both of these. It right from the beginning. This is a great way to end the stream, by the way. It's a good three hours and thirty-five minutes. George comes to I don't know what the fuck you're saying, Will. I know. Well, it's okay. Hello, William. How are you? Hello, Vinyl Piper, Mars TV, and my best friend Jason and Jose. How are you Everybody's doing? Best friend Jason Rojas. Uh, well, you know, me and Jason have uh, gone through the trenches together. Who hasn't? We uh, plowed through a lot of women in our uh, psychedelic haze. Well, I did not know this. Yeah. You'll have to excuse are you, me. Are you doing that? Are you doing the high voice thing now? <laughs> You're gonna have to. Ex I've been practicing all week, and it's just like in my normal speak right at the moment. So. <laughs> What'd you think, George? Oh, Be of your show. You know, the, the problem with the show was that you were 17 to 20 minutes behind the chat. So when you were saying problem. something, uh, um, we were watching it happen ahead of time. Well, you know, we, all, we all watched it. You know. There were certain jokes I had. Oh, Nick, I can't put more than six people here. Wait, we'll drop out. come on. I'll, I'll drop out. I'll drop out. All no, right. Jason, no. Jason uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, right. Sorry that I confused myself with uh, Austin being next week. Right. Thanks for the tunes, Jason. Here, Jason. I'll be next to you. Oh, gee, who, who just sacrificed themselves for me? Uh, uh, oh, that was Jason. Jason. Rojas. It was just Jason. Rojas. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's fucking collateral damage, dude. Rojas, you're, you're good people, man. I was going to offer my spot, but Jason Rojas, you know. I, you guys would much rather have Jason Rojas up here, I know. No, no, I don't even know you, will you? but I've never talked to you, dude. Well, <laughs> I, I, are you are you Nick? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm with Nick. With the Pixies logo? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. and, you know, I mean, I, well, let me... Uh, I just, I know that there's all kinds of weird, crazy intermingling of bullshit going on that I don't, I keep my distance from. And, well, I, and I just, you know, and I hear about it and I was like, hey, <laughs> hey I'm trying to talk to William here. Well, Jose, Jesus what? Jesus Christ, a fucking <laughs> Selena record. Well, not to. No. All right, all right. No, no, no. I don't want to just. I have so many <laughs> Selena records, it's not even funny. Uh, anyway, William, there, yeah. it's like I, I hear. Jose, I love you, dude. I love you so much. You got a good dog. Yeah, that is a good dog. Yeah, it is a good dog. And then uh, there's a I'm good the dog too. there. Hey, Nate, how are you? Yeah, what's going on? Listen, William, how it's not, you? it's not, it's not as bad as you think, dude. Like nobody fucking, uh, nobody from our end is pissed off at you. Yeah, we have no reason to be. Yeah. I, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when you came, you, you, you seem I don't even know if it was really that. you. Was it, was it really you okay. when you came in and you said, am I welcome Stop here in our, in our chat, right? Okay. Well, I popped in the other night and uh, part of it was like, I, I wanted to chat with Ruth Ann and I saw her in there and I, and I said, hi, Ruth Ann. And then I was like, that was really rude of me to pop into your chat, say hi to somebody else. So I did want to be a gentleman. No, that's say, not rude. That's our mood. In a yeah, way, we do that all the time. We don't give a fuck about that. Dude. Yeah, we ha there are no manners needed on our street. Well, as an individual with a controversial live stream, uh, going into <laughs> someone else with a controversial live stream, yeah, I wanted to acknowledge okay. all, dude. Say hi, Mr. Port. But anyways, um, so I... It, I feel like it took a lot of balls to do what I did. I have been planning that for the last few months, but the what, opportunity planning what? became perfect. What, the, to come into our chat and say hello? No, well, I was changing the subject back to the Rachel stream because I'd asked you about that, and I think Nick... We don't watch me. Rachel. Let, okay, okay. so here's the thing. Okay. We, me and Nick um, have already been hung up to dry with uh, all that shit, you know, because we... 
we just let whoever wants to come on come on yeah I, and, and then I, inevitably people go you're gonna be fucked by doing this possibly true and we are but and that, that give said i have no problem with rachel she's you know been nice to me throughout that's I've where me and nick met and years. nick met on rachel's well, show dude yeah, yeah we, we yeah. most of us met through rachel's show okay. like it, and in 2020 when we were all locked down we we she got us through it so you know and her she used to have her channel used to be Not me, um, rachel music man live stream uh music ma'am you know instead of man yeah. So you get you get the joke uh and um then some asshole that was like trying to take her out like came up one day with i guess it's you know some big dick fucking wagon you know and her and her screen went black it went black so a few uh, i i don't even think a few days went by because she said you know who I'm just cares gonna, dude who fucking cares nick I'm just trying to give William some some backstory of well, DC fuck lore. William. You know, you know the problem with William is that he's a fucking shit stir. So we just have <laughs> to fucking approach him with caution. <laughs> I think William can take it. He, he's he's oh he's, well. You seem like a good dude, and I don't know why everyone. I'm pissed. afraid, Nick. <laughs> and part of jumping on here is maybe to get uh, random opinions, you know, from people feedback because i i don't get a lot of comments on my stuff and i think people are alarmed like elliot cruz is like well i watch william because one week he's going after stark and the next week he you know or, or i don't it does seem like i'm kind of you know dude, just, who fucking cares fuck the, it all the, fuck the all whole, that shit dude and who gives I mean, a fuck dude well, that real, whole, you can't be friends with them or you can't be friends with me if you're friends with them and uh, you, you know that yeah, yeah, no. yeah, we no. don't give a fuck about that. Yeah, well, to, I want to answer this as a whole because I was about to say something. And to answer Zeb's question, huge pro I wrestling like, fan. I like whole the way life. That Jose swings his dick. Yeah, well, it is nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I had to watch a lot of wrestling. I see a lot of characters in the VC. And All right, uh, it's time for because uh, it's my stream, I guess. I give up, guys. It's time for no, relaxing. William, just fucking don't fucking. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, there's nothing to give fucking, up on. Don't worry dude. about We're it, dude. Just, We're, we uh, come to have fun. Grace, you can always show a record. Don't ask me. <laughs> Do it. Show a record. So Wait, I can't. I did. Someone's in. So, uh, if someone has to drop off, someone's uh, gonna come I'll in. I'll show. All right, no, this I said I was not in two today. All right, all right. That's nice. Dude, I'm in so many records. That yeah, I've already I'll, shown. I'll, I'll, so, someone's coming up. No, but uh, maybe. Uh, all right, William, you made your piece. Uh, you were you were uh, good behaved today. And, uh, well, thanks, Jose. But uh, don't don't shit stir any anymore, right? I'm showing this. What, hey, what did what, what William, happened? Did, I, the music. did we miss some? Wait, George, is that a real uh, like first oh, no, one? Is that? Was the first silver, silver, silver Megaforce? Okay, yeah. Okay, I got one of those. What are those? Duck Dugs? Where are my Duck Dugs? You got us. You both have. You know what? I when it comes to bands like like Metallica, nice. I nice. I don't need the originals. I had the Silver Megaforce, Ride the Lightning that I got in a collection. And this collection paid for itself over and over. You know, you get shit for being a flipper, dude. I I buy collections and sell them so I can buy more records. It's, it's hey, just, Jose, I've got a record you don't know. I I got a record that Jose doesn't have. Right. Uh, it's called oh, Sound. Back. It's called Sound. It's called Screaming Zenith. All right. Can you show it? Oh, you can. Well, can you show it? Yeah, I can show it. All right, show it. Right, oh, yeah. oh I, I got I got a kind of cool one. Here's the uh, the ten inch uh, two LP uh, ten inch Betty. Right. Oh, Nick, I've been after that for so long. Hey, I actually, I, Nick, do you remember this came out like a week that's, or That's ten what days. I said to Nick at the fucking uh, ice cream parlor. 
that yeah the, it the, it came out like a week before the cd and so i went i went and bought it but i actually i lost my first collection hey. of fire yeah, so i found this one on online for like 40 bucks yeah, it has a different track. Look, at, look at the chat the chat's going helmet 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 yeah it has, uh, a, different, it have, it has a different track listing from the cd as well which is uh oh i i didn't know that i i was just slightly. listening to the track that CD, what driving home? Uh, Jose, uh, for the first time tonight, Nick heard uh, Ram. Yeah, I, I've, ne I've oh. never heard that in all. I've, I've never all. heard Ram as well. No, but Nick, the, uh, that, uh, that new Interscope uh, subscription series uh, has announced that they're going to do Betty as, as one of their releases this year. Oh, okay. So, you, you know. So now i got to weigh that whole thing, you know, like, do I want to, you know, Sign up okay. for one month, and you know, because you know it's like super inflated. Those services when you only join for one month and drop out, you know. Well, that—that's so. why you find someone who's already a member. Like I, I have a one of those master realities coming to me from a a, a kind-hearted soul who is a BMP member. But that's the thing is, like, I mean, it's the Interscope subscription service, so I don't have any oh. friends that are going to be subscribing well, to that, and if they are, I probably don't want to be friends with them. <laughs> you, know, you know, I I've had pretty much every version of Betty. Um, like, Helmet is one of the bands that I uh, collected, like, their entire vinyl discography. And um, the best sounding one is not necessarily this one but the there's a german pressing it's just it, i think it's the only it's just it's just a regular 12 inch 33 rpm german on interscope but it sounds fantastic and then there was one that was put out by this this company that almost seemed kind of bootleg um they were called let them eat vinyl going, Zeb. it's fine Yes, what is that like, doing? Yeah, well, Steve like it is better, but uh, he doesn't have opera, so... <laughs> XDC, I'll go get my XDC records. Anybody here? Have the, uh, oh, here's, here's an RL, huh? 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 <laughs> you know, a uh, quick story about my... Uh, I found an RL that's sealed. And the reason I know Fuck you, you found it. How do you know yeah, it's well, an RL if it's sealed? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So I know a guy who owns a record store. That he owns the record store because he bought it, like the record store. He bought it from someone else. And he else. sealed it. And he no. sealed it in the basement with no, his no, ceiling. No. no, no. He had a box with a lot of Atlantic records from 69. And Come he on, had Jesus. four copies. He had four copies of Adelaide Zeppelin two. And he's opened two so far, and both of them were RLs. Well, the one you get is gonna be a Piros. So yeah. all right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You the know, one you, that you have that sealed. You, I'll so give you, you already have it. Two hundred and fifty dollars for it. No, no, no. He, he was selling it for for way more than that. Well, I, I'll give it to you. You know, like if you just want to do it, I'll give you two hundred and fifty bucks for it. No. Wait, this is like a mint. RL you're talking about but he doesn't Nick know will, it's Nick, it's Nick will give you $450 for it well, I don't know I don't I know if it's but, well, but, but at least though the one the guy the owner has an RL that's mint and I listened to it I, and it sounded really good this one is is VG plus easily uh, it, it's right. it's in way better condition than i ever I only, thought i, I would always... have hey RL. nick remember that time that we did that 69 at chuck e cheese yeah of course how can i forget but you can't really see that it's shiny there's no scratches on it it cleaned up perfectly i mean there, there's you know those little bullshit hairlines on it but they don't make any noise remember my company I... has all kinds of scratches and i absolutely love it well you know what you can still get Three hundred dollars for a super. People are ridiculous with that record. And, it, it, it you know, through. how long ago did you get that though, William? I've had three copies. I got this one maybe a year ago. I found one for ten bucks uh, at a record store, local record store. The guy didn't know it was when, an RL. What, 
Hey, when, oh, I bought, when, I, nice. when I bought mine, I, I also got a copy of Chet Baker. George, uh, do you want to see a record you would not think I own? What were you saying, George? Here's a rhino. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mosaic. Fuck that band. It's stupid. It's I've never seen that band. Jose. Uh, I don't know why I have it. I, I, I think uh, somebody gave it to me. That's, is that the Unforgettable Fire? Yeah. I've never right. played it. I, at the same time that I bought this, I also bought Chip Baker. You know, Let's Get Lost or whatever. And uh, it, I, I just chalked it up to you. The Chet Baker was a free stiffener. This was what it mattered. Right. <clears throat> Nate, Sorry. did you end up getting one of these? I did not. Okay. Um, Sorry. Did you want one? <laughs> what is it? Oh, uh, it, they, it, SSD control SSD. There were like a, a legendary Boston hardcore band from the 80s, and they only pressed this like a thousand, two thousand max copies in like 1982 or three, and that was it. And then it finally got reissued. Um, and I, I have an extra copy if, if you, I mean, check it out if, if you want, if you need one, let me know. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm. I, I don't know why I own that U2 record. I, I don't. I don't know why I have it. U2 is stupid. It is. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, U2 is a piece of shit. The I only thing, see. the only record that I won't allow anybody to show here, it's a Guns and Fucking Roses. Like, I'll ban you the fuck away. Good channel. I, I, uh, what what? <laughs> The appetite or lies, which or, or uh, which appetite. one? If Any if you them. show if you show the spaghetti incident, I'll be. Okay. Oh, that. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a what about the rape cover? Uh, it, I will I will I would still ban you, but I'll be like, hey man, that's a good pressing, and I'll. If you show you. that cover, I'm gonna report your channel. <laughs> I got I got an original lies and a uh, uh, appetite out there. What is that? This is uh, what's playing in the background. This is Lilacs and Champagne. I'm not familiar with that. It's a side project uh, from uh, the group uh, Grails. Okay, yeah. And, uh, cool nice. See, you know, look look how Nate has his record set up, dude. Hold I on, hold on. There's nobody on the screen of... named Nate, Nick. Who's Nate? Yeah, who's yeah. Nate? Yeah, who? <laughs> you fucking doxer. All right. Oh, that's it. Mr. What? Mars TV. TV. Yes, sir. That, that's. <laughs> yes, Nick P. <laughs> that is how. Just well, keeping I, it real. Just I would real. love to have my records like that instead of a bunch of Calax shells. You know what? You know what uh, record nobody would think that I own? Is this David Gray fucking white lather record? That would have been my last guess, Jose. Yeah, totally. You, you know this, right? Anybody knows well, this record? Nick, I, I do have the Calyx going on right over here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. But but your main shit that you go to the XTC? most is like right yeah, there. So yeah, yeah. Why am I agreeing with yeah. fucking... Why am I oh, agreeing that, with there we go. fucking Williams so much? That, that's not XTC, though. Oh, that looked like Oh, XTC. but it looked like it, didn't it? Didn't it? Yeah. It didn't. Uh, what, uh, what I got was... this not too long ago. Jose, oh, yeah. Jose has three XTC albums. I guarantee you get out. No, I don't want Why label promo? That's impressive. I have an OG of that, but not You know, I have an original. I have an original one. This is I a had great one. one. I bought it for $5, and I sold it recently, so I don't own it anymore. Really sorry. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna jump off here in a minute. I feel like I have a, I have to show an impressive record or something though before I do. <laughs> no, no, no. What? Well, William, uh, you're I just showed always up. welcome on our show, and okay. and we even said that to you, like when you were in the chat. I, I don't know if you blah blah blah. Of us that these people, you're more than welcome to come up and hang out. Like, we, there's an open door. 
you know, for everyone. Uh, you're breaking up. seem to be a producer. What? Yeah, you're you're breaking up. Wolfman here. Um. Yes, sir. <laughs> what happened with George? Did did George just say I can't take it anymore? Piper, it's I've never been on a, a... You know you really annoy George Borden when he jumps off a stream, but I that, the record you just heard is the Zim, Zimmerman Brothers. They're from Columbus, Nebraska, a little polka group that uh, really reminiscent of Joe Meek. I would check this out if you guys, you know, live near Columbus, Nebraska. I bet they helped write and then, my like, pal five days away foot. from Nebraska. That looks like a... That looks like a, a a my pal foot foot type of cover. Yeah, it, it does look like two it. copies. <laughs> oh, two, two. Uh, anybody that... here collects uh, Quero Quero Bonita records? Is is it only me? Or... Oh, but for real, you know this record right here, David Gray. So he recorded this record by himself. He produced it, and the songs were so catchy. They used to use two of these songs to waterboard people in Guantanamo Bay. Oh, sh that's a great story, right? Imagine your song is so catchy. People hated it so much. They start, you know, doing that with two people in Guantanamo I, Bay. Is it a side I, view with a waterboard on the front? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I was going to say, uh, that, that sounds like some torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good, it's a good pop record, but it's like once you hear it, well, if you are not... If you're not from the UK, you're probably okay with it. If you're from the UK, you probably think somebody should kill me right now with this, you know? So you're, 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 you're not okay with it? Is what, if you're no, I'm okay with it. What I'm saying is, like, if you're okay. from the UK, you're probably were overexposed to that record, you know? Okay, yeah. Because uh, I hear that. You know? Well, um, what... what uh, 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 Chris, you were showing good records. Uh, you don't have to ask me. You can show, like, you can bomb it. Like, uh, I know, I know. It, it's it's my stream. Like this this stream is safe haven for uh, people uh, doing. All right, it, it's three fifty seven hours. I'm gonna cut it at four hours. Uh, I'm I'm uh, thankful for everybody that's uh, that uh, came here. I think everybody did a, a great job. Uh, uh, thanks for being in my first uh, live stream. Um, uh, I don't know what other people are going to think, but I enjoyed it. And uh, again, this was made so I have a little push and try to make actual videos. Well, this you was know. a better stream than PB oh. Thaw. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, 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 I, write, I like that record a lot. Oh, all right. That only came out in the, in France and UK, something like that, right? I'm, I'm not sure. This one's French. All right. This one, nope, this is UK. It's, yeah, it's a UK. I think it was only UK. I don't know where my copy is. I don't well, know hey, where my uh, line of cocaine, I don't remember what that was. Well, Jose, I do want to give you the 60-second warning. We're about 65 seconds left in the show here. Yeah. So I know you said you wanted to close out at the four-hour mark, but I do want to, before I jump off. One minute, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I want to, I'm going to say, I'll get William the Steely Whoever's Dan. speaking by a thrill never purchased a copy of the first Steely Dan record. All right. I, Good night. I, I've given like four of those away. Oh. <laughs> Give them away here in Omaha. All right. Peace, guys. <laughs> Bye. Wait, wait. Bye. Chris, right. so, Thanks, so, Jose. Are those the uh, non the Stooges logos? You, you still have like 30 seconds to show. Them. Oh, all right. I, I think uh, I think George and I may start up a. Uh, uh, Alive. All right, I'll, I'll I'll check it out. I'm just gonna have to eat, and you know. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know I don't know what we're gonna do, uh, but Nathaniel Mars, can you play that Merce beat record, please, to end this stream? Uh, yeah. All right, there you go. All, All right, right. I'm, I'm gonna later. I'm gonna cut that off and and say goodbye now. All right, bye, Nick. That Nate, good... Jose, Piper, good time. Bye. Later. Uh, can Can you Can you show those? Uh, oh. Oh, he left. All right. Yeah, he'll play that, and then we'll we'll be done. I guess. 
I thought Chris was staying. Uh, all right. All right. Oh, it's uh, hold you on just, a second. It's still sealed. You never opened it. That's no. fine. You you know it's going for like one hundred and fifty dollars on discounts. Oh well, the, I'm gonna keep it sealed and just sell it, man. <laughs> you did. Oh, I right. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's going like for one hundred and fifty bucks. All right. Until that, yeah. uh, well, you gotta give me that heads up before uh, you repress it, then. Yeah. All, all right. right. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll slice it open. No, I don't have to open. All right, that's fine. All right. No, we'll, I'll do it uh, here. We'll, we'll close it out. Hold on. All right. All right. The, the thrill. I, I don't know if anybody here is left, but the thrill of a new record. Oh, you're gonna. You're not gonna open it. All right. The thrill of a record being open. Possibly one hundred and fifty dollars on Discogs now being worth thirty, forty, fifty, maybe. It's uh, thrilling, right? Uh, so um, uh, thanks everybody for coming to my uh, uh, first live stream. Uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna go with a little masterpiece called Mersbeat by Mr. Masami Akita, a great fellow with uh, an impressive. Uh, discography that i love with all my life and um you know uh i guess uh play on i'll i'll, I'll end it randomly all right all right there we go good good night everybody are you ready yes all right